Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us start. On uh, behalf of, of the organizing committee, uh, I'm happy to, to welcome you at our conference, the fifth international conference on stochastic methods. And uh, we will start with uh, the opening message uh, from the chair, uh, from Stiklov Mathematical Institute, uh, the opening message of the chair of the organizing committee, academician, Albert Nikolai Shiraev. And uh, this video message will be in Russian. I hope everybody understands Russian. Uh, Sultan, please включайте. Minuto. Как доказать мне его слушать? Зачем мне слушать? Да. Он что-то говорит, подключил. Ну коллеги, вот, сидит, подключился. Мы начинаем сегодня пятую международную конференцию по теории вероятности математической статистики и их применения. Кратко конференцию по цифратическим методам. Началом таких конференций были школы колоколы, первые из которых состоялась в 1994 году в поселке Абрау-Дюрсо на базе спортивного комплекса «Лиманчик» Ростовского государственного университета. Последняя такая школа, 20-й по счету, состоялась в республике Мария Эй в мае 2013 года. Организатором и координатор всех этих школ Колокимов был профессор Игорь Викторович Павлов и большая группа его учеников и коллег. В апреле 2015 года в Ростове-на-Дону состоялось по инициативе Павлова расширенное заседание школ Колокимов и было принято решение об их преобразовании в международную конференцию по стахатическим методам. И действительно, состоялись четыре таких конференции. В 2016, 2017, 2018 и 2019 годах в пансионате «Моряк» недалеко от Абрау Дюрсо и в спортивно-оздоровительном лагере «Радуга» на берегу Черного моря. Что придало, конечно, этим конференциям определенный шар. Эти конференции собирали большое количество ученых. Так, почти на каждой конференции было порядка ста участников, многие из которых представляли другие страны. Например, на третьей конференции были представлены ученые из США, Франции, Германии, Нидерландов, Португалии, Саудовской Аравии, Румынии, Болгарии, Узбекистана. Всего было сделано 18 пленарных докладчиков, докладов и 46 секционных. На четвертой конференции было сделано уже 21 пленарный доклад, секционных докладов было 44. Российские участники были представлены разными городами. Эти города есть – Вороне, Зеленоград, Калуга, Ростов-на-Дону, Самара, Санкт-Петербург, Таганрог, Уфа, Хабаровск, ну и Москва, конечно. Примерно четверть докладов было сделано аспирантами и студентами. Весьма хорошо, что все конференции, все тезисы этих конференций были опубликованы в журнале «Теория вероятности» и ее применения. Так, первая конференция была опубликована на 20 страницах, вторая конференция на 40, третья на 50, а четвертая уже на 60. Отметим организаторов этих конференций. Математический институт Академии наук, Московский государственный университет, Национальный комитет Общество Бернули, Российский университет Дружбы народов, Донецкий государственный технический университет. Да, 
Настоящей пятой конференции, которая проходит, к сожалению, онлайн, работа будет проходить по двум секциям. Первая секция – это теоретическая вероятность и статистика. Вторая секция – это их предложение. Все это вы увидите из программ. Uh, dear, dear colleagues, uh, now it is a great pleasure to give the floor uh, to uh, the vice chairman of the organizing committee uh, from Ruduyen University, uh, Konstantin Evgenyevich Samuilov. Please. Константин Евгеньевич, у нас некоторые проблемы со звуком. Сейчас там и видео должно okay. быть. Вот, и сейчас, Павел. Сейчас лучше стало. So, I'm continue. So, uh, it's just like in some, in some films. Uh, I skipped uh, a few words about uh, the beginning of conference, and I should say also that this conference, of course, brings us together in these difficult times. And I am uh, sure, I do hope that next year uh, or uh, some times later, it will bring us together in reality, in the real world, and we will continue. Thank you very much to the efforts of the Uh, program committee, organizing committee, local organizing committee, to all colleagues who presented uh, their papers, uh, submitted their papers at the conference, and uh, who will, together with us, these nearest days. Thank you very much, and uh, I send also you uh, the congratulations from the authorities of the People's French University of Russia, from president of the university, Professor Filipov. So, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be with you these days, and in a few minutes, uh, sessions at both tracks will start, and you remember that at first track, uh, the uh, continuation of the presentations will be about 40 minutes, and about five minutes for transition between presentations for some technical preparations, and about 25 or 30 minutes at the second track. So, Thank you very much. Yes, and I will join all, all colleagues uh, as an ordinary uh, participant of the conference. Thank you. And we can, I, I think we can go to the sessions. 
So, dear, dear colleagues, uh, everybody who wants to uh, visit uh, the track application of stochastic methods should join uh, uh, another meeting. Uh, you will see the link to this meeting in the program. And uh, uh, everybody who wants uh, to, to be in the first track, please stay here in this meeting. So, I'm happy to uh, start uh, the first uh, the first uh, session, the first morning session, and uh, uh, it is a great pleasure to announce the first talk of Professor uh, Gerd Christoph and Professor Vladimir Ulyanov. Uh, the talk will be presented by Professor Christoph, uh, who will tell us about short expansions for high dimension, low sample size data statistics in random setting. So, please. Professor Christoph. Uh, you can see it. Sultan, поставьте, пожалуйста, на заглавную страницу видео профессора Кристофа. I have here the video. Oh, just... You have the video? Uh, we do not see uh, you, but we see your account. You could uh, share your screen, your desktop, with your presentation. I have the presentation here, but I cannot see the the desktop. What happens here? <sighs> Where is the, where are you? <laughs> is a join meeting here? Yes, I have open this. Oh, yeah. Can you see me? Uh, unfortunately, no. Please switch But, on your video. Yes, Dr. Asylum, I now will switch on the video. You can see oh, it? Oh, 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 yes, yes. We, we, uh, okay. we see. Okay. Yes. Павел Андреевич, я не вижу. Я вижу только... А, вот все видно. Сейчас. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to attend this conference. This is my first video conference, and I want to thank the organizers for their great efforts. The paper is a joint work with Vladimir Ulyanov from the Moscow State University. We consider here three geometric statistics for K vectors when the non-random dimension m of the vectors is replaced by, the, by a random dimension. Therefore, let's first consider samples with random sample sizes and the influence of the random sample size and the scale factor of the limit distribution. Let's start with the beginning. Consider M dimensional vectors or points in the M dimensional vector space x1 and xk till xk. A high dimensional low sample size data setting is if we either M tends to infinity, M is the dimension of the vectors tends to infinity and the number of vectors is fixed or both the dimension and the number of vectors tends to infinity. The case one is what we are considered now. The three geometric statistics are the length of a m-dimensional observation vector and the distance between two independent observation vectors and the angle between these vectors. Up to now, we want to consider m 
dimensional normal vectors with zero mean and identical covariance matrix IM. In this paper in 2005, uh, Hall, Murren, and Niemann showed such relations for the length, the distance, and the angle of the geometric statistics, where this is the Euclidean space, is the Euclidean distance, and M is the dimension of the vectors. First of all, we First of all, we consider the angle, the connection between the angle and the sample correlation coefficient. Second order as asymptotic expansions for distributions for the length and the distance are proved in this paper of Kawaguchi, Ulyanov, and Fujikoshi. And uh, therefore, we want to look here on the angle theta m of the vectors x1 and x2 and the angle and the correlation coefficient rm are connected by this relation where the distribution functions are connected in such a manner that here we have instead of x square root of m times sinus of x divided by square root of n. And m is a dimension of the both vectors. If x1 and x2 are uncorrelated, then we get uh, the following asymptotic, which was proved by Konashi in 79. Here we have a rate of convergence of n minus, m with power minus 3 half, where phi and small, capital phi and small phi are the standard normal law and its density. But what happens if the dimension of the vectors are random? Therefore, we won't consider the, uh, the sample correlation coefficient rnn of the first nn random variables x1, x2, and so on. Therefore, we look what that means, samples with a random sample size nn. Let x1, x2, and so on are real random variables and n1 and 2 are integer random variables of this, on the same probability space, and the nn are the random sizes of the underlying sample, which depend of, of a natural parameter n, and we suppose that nn and the x1, x2 are independent, and the sequence tends in probability to infinity. We define the TNN in pointwise for any omega in this manner, where TM is a statistic of a sample with a non-random sample size N, and here we get the statistic with a random sample size NN. The use of such samples we get we, you, uh, the use of the samples has grown on steadily in the last years, and in this paper, we can find an overview of statistical inferences with run, a random number, number of observations and some applications. First, we consider random sums and random means. Let x1, x2, x, and so on be a sequence of independent random variables with and nu is the random size of the sample. This is a random sum, and here we have the random mean 
of the first new random variables. The famous kolmogorov prokhov theorem of the existence of expectation sounds if the expectation of xk exists and the expectation of the new exists and new is independent from the future of the sequence that means that the event new equals k is independent of the sigma algebra generated by xk1 xk plus 2 and so on and if this sum converge then we get that the expectation we can calculate in such a manner and if x1 x2 are additional identical distributed and new is independent of x1 and 2 the important world in equality uh, the world's identity for random sums hold that the expectation of the random sum as new is the expectation of new times the expectation of x1 this famous result was proved by Kolmogorov and Prokhorov. Prokhorov was, was 18, 19 years, and uh, the result is, uh, appears 71 years ago. Let now TM is the a statistic. Here it's a random mean of the first m, m is fixed, random variables xk. And we suppose that the probability or the distribution function of square root of m times tm tends to the normal law. If now we know that the randomness of the sample size nn may crucially change the asymptotic properties of the statistic. If nn is geometric distributed with success probability 1 divided by n, here we have the probabilities, then the expectation of nn is n, and we get that the distribution function of square root of the expectation of nn times uh, random mean of the first nn random vari variables tends to the student law. On the other side, if we take y1, y2, yn, iid discrete Pareto, and with such distributions, and nn is the maximum maximum of y1, y2, yn, then we get here the distribution function of nn in the integer points. Then root square, then here we have that the expectation of nn doesn't exist. But nevertheless, we get that the distribution of nn times tnn tends to the Laplace distribution. We see two different nn's and two different limit, the uh, limit laughs. But the scaling factor may also have influence of the type of limit distributions. Here, for example, we consider independent standard normal distributions. X1 and X2 are independent standard normal distributed and nn is geometrically distributed with success probability 1 divided by n and it's independent of course of x1 and x2 and we consider the random sum as ns if we take a random scaling factor 1 divided by square root of nn then we get for any fixed, for any n, we get that this is a normal law. If we take a non-random scaling factor, one divided by square root of the expectation of nn, then we get the Laplace distribution. And if we take a mixed scaling factor, the square root of the expectation divided by 
is the number of uh, the dimension, then we get the student law with two degrees of freedom. Now we are looking for the conditions under which we will get asymptotic expansions for the statistic TNN. The condition on the statistic TM is a non-random sample size is the following. This distri the distribution function of the normally set statistic TN is approximated by a differential function f and two differential bounded function f1 and f2 with an order m with power minus a, where a is a number large, a real number larger than one. Similar condition we get, we need for the sample size, for the random sample size, nn. Here we need a distribution function h of y, which start as zero point, and a bounded function h2, and we can approximate the difference by n with power minus b, where b is larger than one. And we get a transfer proposition, which is a result from a more general transfer proposition given in this paper. Let, or if for the statistic TM, condition one, and for the random sample size NN, condition two are satisfied, then we can approximate the probabilities distribution function by G2N, which is given here, with C1 times the negative A minus A moment of NN, plus here some constants with the power N minus B. The A was the range of conversions of the TM and the B was the rate of convergence of the condition in condition two. The GN is some sequence of constants which tends to infinite, and the MN is given here. The problem here is sometimes that the integral is started by one divided by GN because NN started by one and NN divided by GN started by one divided by GN. Now we return to the sample correlation coefficient of the vectors with non-random dimension M. We have it here and if they are uncorrelated, then we have proved in this paper that we get here the, an asymptotic expansion with the order or with the rate of convergence of m with power minus two. And the constant c we can estimate by two points zero one, zero eight. And now we study the correlation coefficient of with the with the dimension nn of the vectors involved. Let nn be negative binomial, binomial distributed shifted by one with success probability one divided by n and the real parameter r larger than one. Here we have the probability mass function. The gn is the expectation of Rn of of Nn, this is R times N minus one plus one, and GRR is a gamma distribution, then we get such an estimate where 
is power n with, min with minus minimum of r and 1. And here you can see the step function, and this is the limit distribution. But we need better approximations. Excuse me, Professor Christoph, sorry for interrupting. Could you please press Ctrl minus to resize Control. your presentation, just because we do not see the uh, last line of the presentation. Please press Ctrl minus. Ctrl minus. No, it will not go. Um, hey. Oh, this is bad. Which I, which I had to do now is that I want to go back. So, uh, okay, we could proceed. Can see it? Yes. Uh, now we see the the axis of okay. the graph. Uh, thank you. Uh, if we. Uh, Again, we consider the negative binomial distribution with r larger or equals 1. Uh, and now we get an approximation with order n minus minimum of r order or 2. And here we have the, the limit is the gamma law with r, r is shape and uh, rate r. And here is the density of this one. And here we have the jump correcting function Q1, which is here given. And you can see that uh, the blue line or the blue step function is a distribution function we want to approximate. The red line is a limit distribution. And this is a step uh, this is approximation by the second order asymptotic expansion, and you can see it's nearly covered by the orange line, nearly covered the blue line, so we get a very good approximation here. In not asymptotic expansions, but also in some other negative moments are used. Therefore, we calculated here the minus p moment of the random, sum, the random dimension. And we get that this we can approximate by a leading term and some reminder. And since the leading term, the leading term is not zero, we will get that this is the optimal estimate. We get that the p's negative moment of n and r is less or equal n with power minus minimum r p or 2 if p is not the minimum r and 2. But in the case if p is the minimum of r or 2, we get here additional logarithmic term. And you can see here in this case, indeed it's not a counting mistake also, it's indeed a curse. If we look for the other random size we have considered before, if y1s, we have now a, another constant or parameter, y1s, y12 are discrete Pareto distributed with some parameter s larger than zero, and this is our uh, probabilities. n and s is again the maximum of the first n random variables. Then we get here this distribution function for integers. And again, the expectation is zero, it is, it doesn't exist. Then for any s, fixed s, we get such an approximation again with the order n minus 2. And here we have again the jump correcting function. And we have here the, the step function, the blue one, the limit distribution. 
And the approximation is good, not so good as in the other case, but it's high to order n minus two. Again, here we estimate the negative moments. And here I give an example when we used such things too. If the TM is a random mean with the variance that the, of the TM is sigma square divided by M, then if we look for the TNM, that means if we have M, the, the random dimension or the random number of vector of random variables is changed by the, the non-random M is changed by the random NN. That the variance is sigma squared times the first negative moment of the NN. Now we want to uh, look for the uh, so sample correlation again with the random dimension NN. We get if NN is the binomial distributed random variable, then we get the student distribution with such an so order of the convergence, where two where the limit law is the student one. Here we have the density of the student law involved here. On the other side, if the NNS is the a discrete Pareto distribution and the maximum of such random variables, then we get the Laplace distribution. Here we have the density of the Laplace distribution, again with the order n minus two. Here we can see uh, the blue line is the empirical uh, distribution of this distribution function. The red line, the orange line, is the student law, and the second order approximation is the green line, which is much better, much better than the limit distribution. If we look for the influence of the scaling factor, then we get that uh, we have here the, the distribution function for different gamma, gamma one half, zero or minus one half, and the distribution function tends to the distribution function which starts the density, where in case gamma equals one half, we get again a student, the normal law for gamma equals zero, and the Laplace distribution for, in the case R equals two, for gamma minus one half. Here we get the normal approximation. For the case of the normal approximation, we get for R between zero and one, only the phi n. Here we have a rate of convergence of minus R. In the case of, case of R equals one, we get here a logarithmic term. And if R is larger than one, uh, we don't have a logarithmic, a logarithmic term and we have another coefficient here. Why we get the normal law, we can see here, if we condition, by conditioning, we get this relation. And then we will approximate this one here by the normal law. And we get here the normal law and here we get fx of the first negative moment of nn and a reminder. Here we get not so big differences. Again, the blue line is a limit, is a empirical distribution function, the red line or the orange line is a normal law and the blue line is the, the green line is the second approximation. In the case of the 
here, if we look for the, the mixed, the mixed uh, scaling coefficient, we get the generalized Laplace distribution as a limit. The generalized, the generalized Laplace distribution Lrx for all r larger than zero, we can defined with help of McDonald's functions, which are complicated. So in the integer case, if r is the integer, we get the so-called Sagan distribution, which I wrote here. And in this case, we get these asymptotic expansions. Let that came back to the angle between the vectors. We know that the angle, and if we look for the statistics, tet, uh, capital theta n is theta m minus pi half. The angle is connected with the uh, with the sample correlation coefficient by this equation, and we get such an asymptotic expansion. The difference is only here we have a factor one divided by three instead of one. And the R and R star is has the order m with minus two. And again, we get as a limit a distribution function with a density, which is in the three different cases, we have the Laplace distribution, the normal law, and the student law with two degrees of freedom. Here we have the approximation by the Laplace law. Here we have the non-random scaling. By the normal law, we have a random scaling. And the student, scaled student law is by a mix of the random and the non-random scaling. And finally, we look for the distance and the length of the vectors in case of the non-random dimension m. Again, we have two k vectors, which are normal with zero and i m, the identical matrix. And this is the length of the vector, and this is the distance between two vectors. So, and we consider now the tm for the length and the tm star for the distance of two vectors. Since the Euclidean matrix is the same as, or x, xi has the same distribution as xi minus xg divided by square root of two, we get here an equal sign and we get for both statistics the same asymptotic. If now we change the m by the random dimension n and r, then we get again in the first case the student law with two r degrees of freedom. In the second case, if we have a random scaling, we get the normal law. But here we have the limit as a the reminder is logarithm, logarithmic n divided by n. And in the last case, if we have a mixed scaling factor, we get the Laplace distribution with two degrees of freedom. Uh, with the Laplace distribution with two. Uh, parameter for, oh, this is all. Thank you for your attention. And here I have some the papers which are mentioned in the, my speech. 
Thank you for your attention. So thank you, thank you very much uh, for a very nice uh, talk. And uh, now it is time for questions. We have 10 minutes uh, for questions. Uh, everybody who wants to, to ask a question, please uh, raise your hand. And uh, you, for, me, for this, you need to, to press a button in uh, Microsoft Teams application, поднять uh, руку. Uh, and then uh, just switch on the microphone and ask your question. So please. Uh, okay, uh, we have a question from Andrei Zorin. Please uh, switch on your microphone. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Okay. I have the question. Uh, is uh, uh, is there any theorem known when the limiting distribution is a gamma distribution? I didn't understand the question. What is what you want? The gamma distribution is the limit, or if the I have some, we have some results. If the limit distribution of the TM of a statistic is a chi square distribution, in the case of the of the gamma distribution, uh, we didn't try up to now. Thank you very much. Please, welcome. So, any any other questions? So, in this case, I I, I have a question, uh, yes. Pro Professor Christoph. Uh, why do you consider uh, a negative the negative binomial distribution uh, as a basic scenario for random dimension? No, oh, is the the negative binomial distribution in this paper, Schluter and Tweter, they called the negative binomial distribution as a very good one for a random sample size because uh, the, in, in, in difference to the Poisson distribution as a random sample size because it avoids the overspecies of the dispersion in, in, in a lot of cases. <laughs> and, and the other <laughs> The uh, reason is that uh, we could obtain a limit distribution which are more than only the limit law by the, uh, by the GRR. And uh, no, this was a, one, another reason. But in this paper, it's mentioned that indeed the negative binomial is a very good one because we have two parameters. We have the n and the r. But for small r, it's very difficult because we have only a rate of convergence with n with power minus r. OK. okay thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, more questions? So this case, oh, so we have a question from uh, Vladimir Vasilyevich Ulyanov. Uh, please uh, switch on your microphone. Yes, so hello everybody. So uh, in fact, this is not a question which is uh, also partly answer to first question about what's happening if uh, limit distribution is gamma distribution. So you see, in fact, uh, Professor Christoph told that uh, our results are quite universal in, in, the, in the sense that uh, there are two parts in this result. The first part assumes that you have some approximation for statistics. And so this approximation could be based on normal distribution or high square distribution or any other known distribution. But uh, the main problem to have this kind of results so as soon as you have this kind of results for any limit distribution with a rate of convergence or uh, some, some uh, uh, estimates of uh, accuracy of approximation, then you can apply so-called general transfer theorems and get results for uh, statistics based already on random sample size. 
So this is what I wanted just to wear. And uh, as I say, the main problem is to have this kind of results with different limit distributions for non-random statistics, non-random in the sense that on the fixed size sample statistics. Thank you. This is what I wanted just to add to first grade. So thank you very much for your question. And uh, if uh, there are no more questions, uh, we will start again in four minutes with uh, the second talk. Thank you again. Let us thank the speaker. Thank you. So, vier Minuten. Евгений, у нас, самое, у нас есть время протестировать вашу презентацию. Да, Павел, здравствуйте. Давайте здравствуйте. подключить ее. Угу. Так, поделиться содержимым, правильно я понимаю? Да, да. Так видно? Да, да, все, все хорошо. Павел Андреевич, а у нас что-то видно, потому что у меня виден только серый экран. Сейчас что-то изменилось? Сейчас я вижу ER, а вот сейчас а. видна презентация, да. Ну, я не знаю, может быть, это у меня только проблема. Иногда во время презентации появляется на слайде такая серая, серая полоса, которая занимает где-то треть, наверное. Или это, или это проблема Microsoft? Я думаю, вы вводите курсором мышки, поэтому, может быть, поэтому. Да, может быть, поэтому. Буду сидеть тихо. Хорошо. So, dear colleagues, uh, let us start again, and uh, uh, it is a great pleasure to announce the second talk of uh, the morning session, uh, the talk of uh, the joint talk of uh, Dr. Evgeny Anatolich Pchilinsev and uh, Professor Sergei Markovich Pergamenshikov. And uh, this talk will be presented by uh, Evgeny Anatolich and uh, uh, who will tell us about uh, some estimation methods for non-Gaussian regression models from discrete time observation. Uh, so, please. Thank you. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. I am happy to participate in this conference and I would like to thank uh, the organized committee. And I start uh, uh, my 
work. Uh, join with uh, Professor Pergamichikov and um, outline in this slide. Firstly, I, I would like to, to talk about uh, uh, introduction, uh, the uh, model descriptions and problem statement. And uh, after uh, the, uh, we will consider the main results uh, and uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulations uh, results also. So uh, we consider uh, the following regression model uh, uh, in one, in equation one, uh, where uh, function S uh, is an unknown one periodic function from uh, space L201. Uh, the noise process uh, xi t is a non Gaussian Einstein Lebesgue process with unknown distribution. And uh, uh, the observation dura duration t is a fixed integer number. And uh, uh, Ashton-Lebesgue process xi t uh, defined as in equation two, uh, where the parameters a, uh, rho one and uh, rho two are known coefficients, that is are uh, nuisance parameters. Uh, w t is a standard Bellman motion process, and the t is a poor jumps Levy process, which is defined uh, in equation three. Uh, with uh, mu uh, jump measure with non-random compensation mu tilde, uh, where p is the Levy measure on uh, r star. Uh, this is r without zero. And uh, we suppose that this measure satisfies these uh, conditions in four. Uh, we know that the process, uh, Ashton-Lebesgue process 2, is conditionally Gaussian with respect to sigma algebra uh, G, uh, which is generated by jump process, uh, Levy process ZT. And uh, as to the coefficients uh, in 2, uh, we assume that uh, uh, they satisfy uh, by conditions and inequalities uh, in five, where the uh, bounds A star, uh, rho and uh, sigma star are function of T, that is duration uh, of observations, and uh, such that uh, for any uh, epsilon positive, uh, we have uh, six. Uh, we denote by Q, Q T the family of all distributions of process uh, Y T and X T uh, on the Scarahot space D, uh, uh, which satisfies the uh, uh, conditions five six. Uh, we need to estimate the unknown function S in the regression model on the basis of the observations uh, at the fixed time moments YTG, uh, where TG uh, is equal to J divided by P, and uh, P is the uh, observation frequency, uh, and we suppose that uh, P is some fixed integer number, and we have uh, the number of observations n, uh, which is equal to p multiplied by t. Our goal is to develop improved estimation methods via the uh, model selection approach for the uh, regression models in continuous time uh, in the situation when uh, the process yt uh, is not available for the observations uh, in each point and uh, 
and we we have also uh, discrete uh, time observations of uh, YTG. For the first time, uh, the improved estimation approach was uh, proposed uh, for special model selection methods by Fortrini and Pergamichikov. And uh, uh, to apply the improved estimation methods to the general regression models in continuous time, uh, one needs to use the modification of the uh, James Tain's shrinkage procedure and uh, the uh, Fodrinian Pergamichikov approach. Uh, in this uh, talk, Uh, I will study the estimation uh, accuracy improvement effect based on discrete data and uh, show that the proposed improved estimators outperform the usual least squares estimates in non-asymptotic accuracy estimation uniformly over the observations frequency P. Uh, further, uh, in this work, uh, uh, we find the constructive sufficient conditions for the observation frequency P, under which we obtain uh, sharp non-asymptotic oracle inequality for uh, risks. And then using these uh, inequalities, we establish the robust efficiency property for the improved model selection procedure in adaptive setting, that is uh, when uh, the uh, Param regularity parameters of the function S are known. And finally, uh, we will consider the Monte Carlo simulation results. And so uh, we consider the estimation problem uh, via quadratic risks uh, eight. Uh, for any uh, estimate as uh, hard, where EQS uh, stands for the expectation with respect to the distributions uh, PQS of the process uh, YT with a fixed uh, distribution Q of the noise XIT and a given function S. And uh, uh, in case when uh, the distribution Q are known, is unknown, uh, we will use the robust risk, uh, R star, uh, which uh, is equal to supremum uh, by over Q, quadratic risk, R Q. Uh, firstly, uh, let's choose basic one periodic functions, uh, phi G, from space L2 which are also normal on the time grid, uh, T1 and so on, Tp. Uh, that is, uh, for these functions, uh, 10 holds. And uh, assume also that these functions are bounded uh, in the sense of 11. And for example, we can use the trigonometric functions, uh, which uh, are defined in or for example we can use also the dummy range uh, functions uh, and so on use this uh, basic functions uh, for any t from a time grid uh, we can represent uh, a known function s as uh, such sum in uh, where theta g is uh, in the product of s and basic function phi g, and to estimate uh, the unknown function s, we need to estimate the unknown uh, coefficients theta g in this sum. Uh, to estimate these coefficients theta g, uh, we know that theta g is equal to 
sum uh, and uh, uh, the following sum and it's natural to replace the difference as uh, of TL multiplied by uh, difference TL and uh, TL minus 1 with the observation difference YTL minus YTL minus 1. And uh, so we define the least square estimates uh, theta G hat uh, as in uh, 14, uh, where Psi G uh, defined as uh, uh, via uh, basic function phi J. And uh, we can note that the system of the functions uh, Psi G also is also normal in space L2. And the corresponding Fourier coefficients uh, can be represented as uh, theta bar uh, in uh, 15 with uh, uh, Hj uh, depending uh, for, by uh, unknown function S. And uh, therefore, we can represent the least square estimates theta hat as in uh, 16, uh, where uh, xi g is the uh, stochastic integrals uh, with respect to a Steinlenberg process xi t. Further. Of t, uh, namely uh, the xi t um, are the je conditional Gaussian with the uh, covariance matrix uh, which is defined in uh, 17 and such that for any d uh, over by d0 uh, infimum uh, the difference between uh, trace of covariance matrix G and maximum eigenvalue of this matrix uh, divided by zero uh, this quantity L star almost sure uh, use uh, using this property uh, we can uh, define the shrink which estimates for uh, Fourier coefficients theta g in the uh, following form, uh, which is present in uh, 19, uh, theta g star uh, with uh, parameters uh, ct and uh, we also suppose that uh, radius r uh, may be depend of t and uh, rt is that, uh, is uh, slowly increasing as t uh, tends to infinity uh, to compare the uh, estimators uh, 14 least square estimates and uh, uh, shrinkage estimates 19. We use uh, the quantity delta QS, uh, which is defined in 20, and uh, we have the following theorem. Uh, assume that the unknown function S is Lipschitz, and then for any T and uh, D uh, and P, we have that uh, the delta star less than uh, these values uh, and uh, some remarks uh, note that from this theorem we have uh, uniformly over P uh, the upper bound in uh, 21 for delta star is is negative uh, 
that means that non-asymptotically the, the proposed estimate uh, theta star outperforms the mean square accuracy, the least square estimates theta hat. Uh, note that uh, if uh, the law bound rho uh, t is constant, uh, then asymptotically as t and d uh, tend to infinity uh, for uh, such p, in 22 we obtain that uh, delta star less than uh, minus uh, d divided by t in square. Uh, that is, we have the uh, minimal, uh, minimal gain uh, in accuracy. Uh, the next step is uh, estim uh, we construct the estimates for a known function S. And uh, uh, firstly, we define a class of weighted least square estimates as gamma hat, as in 23, with uh, theta g hat. And uh, uh, weights coefficients gamma belong to a finite set uh, gamma capital. And we suppose that for any vector gamma from uh, gamma capital, there exists uh, some fixed integer d uh, dependent uh, of gamma, such that the first d components of vector gamma are equal to 1. And use uh, such structure of uh, set gamma we define a class of shrinkage uh, weighted estimates for a known function S as in uh, 24 with uh, shrinkage uh, estimates theta star and uh, we have the following results. Uh, assume that the function S is Lipschitzian and uh, the condition H1 uh, holds, uh, then uh, the difference between uh, quadratic risks of uh, proposed shrinkage estimates as star and uh, least square estimates uh, as hat is negative, and we have uh, the minimal gain in accuracy which is equal to theta in square. And uh, uh, we have this inequality uh, uniformly for Rainy P. And um, and further. We, uh, in 24, we have a class of shrinkage estimates, and uh, 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 next step is uh, choose the best estimates in this uh, class, and for this we, we will use the uh, model selection approach proposed by Galchuk and Pirganichikov via Oracle Inequalities approach. Uh, and for this, uh, we use the quadratic estimation accuracy error gamma, and uh, uh, which is equal to uh, such quantities in 26. And it's clear that to choose a good uh, weighted vector gamma, one needs to minimize this uh, function 26 over gamma in gamma capital. And uh, however, the coefficients uh, theta bar are known, uh, be, are known and uh, uh, we need to replace in these functions the terms uh, theta star uh, multiplied by theta bar 
by the estimators. Uh, for our case, we use the estimator defined as uh, in 27, theta tilde, uh, where sigma hat is an estimate for the proxy variance sigma q, which is defined in uh, 5. And uh, we define it through the estimator of the Fourier coefficients on the trigonometric basis that is uh, sigma hat defined in 28. For this estimate, we have the following uh, proposition. And uh, firstly, we suppose that the observation frequency P is a function of T uh, such that um, that uh, P satisfies uh, the following uh, conditions. And if we assume that the unknown function S has a square integrable derivative and uh, the condition H2, H2 holds, then uh, we have uh, the inequality 29. And and further, uh, uh, when we modify the quadratic accuracy, one needs to penalize this modification by uh, adding in uh, error of gamma, a special positive penalty term. In our case, the penalization means that the additional positive term makes the minimization problem more difficult. So for any gamma from uh, gamma capital, we set uh, the function g of gamma as in 13. Uh, this function uh, called, is called uh, the cost function. Uh, where, where parameter rho is some positive penalization level, p hat t is a penalty term defined uh, as in uh, 31. And uh, it should be noted that in the case when the value of variance, uh, proxy variance sigma q is known, we have that uh, sigma hat equals to sigma q and penalization a term, a penalty term, uh, is equal to the sigma q can be defined uh, via sigma q as in uh, 32. Uh, and now substituting the weight coefficients, minimizing the cost function, that is gamma star, uh, in uh, the class of uh, shrinkage weighted least square estimates, uh, leads to the improved model selection procedure, S star, and it will be noted that gamma star exists because uh, the set gamma is a finite set. And if the minimizing sequence uh, gamma is not unique, one can take minimizer. For this uh, model selection procedure, uh, we will uh, obtain sharp oracle inequality and establish the uh, asymptotic efficiency property. And for this, uh, we uh, construct the set of phase co coefficients, gamma capital, and we consider the following grid AT uh, with uh, some conditions. 
which is defined in uh, 34 and 35. And uh, uh, for any alpha from AT, we define the weights uh, gamma as in uh, 36. And uh, uh, we set gamma capital as uh, the set of gamma alpha over alpha from AT. And uh, here note that such set gamma satisfies the con uh, condition H1 with D uh, is equal to the integer part of uh, J star of alpha. Uh, using this uh, set gamma and assume that the conditions H1 and H2 hold and the function S has a square integrable derivative, uh, the robust risk of uh, proposed model selection procedure satisfies the following sharp oracle inequality. It should be noted that this uh, inequality is sharp uh, because uh, the coefficients uh, 1 plus 5 rho divided by 1 minus rho tends to 1 uh, as rho tends to 0. Now, uh, we can use this inequality to establish the asymptotic efficiency property. Uh, in order to study this property, we define the following uh, functional Sobolev ball, WKR, uh, uh, where the parameters R and K are some unknown parameters. And uh, let uh, sigma T is a set of all estimators, ST, which is measurable uh, with respect to the observations. And we need also the following conditions, uh, condition H3, or parameters rho, or parameter rho, namely, uh, we suppose that the parameter rho is a function of t, uh, such that the rho tends to zero, as t tends to infinity, and uh, for any epsilon, positive epsilon, uh, this limit is equal to infinity. We have uh, the following theorems. Uh, the first theorem uh, stands the bound for robust quadratic risks uh, for any estimates as hard. And uh, the next theorem uh, that the lower bound 38 is sharp, that is uh, the improved model selection procedure, robust risk of improved model selection procedure is star, satisfies the upper bound, asymptotic upper bound, and uh, for these theorems, we have that the proposed improved model selection procedure is asymptotically efficient. Uh, that is, the robust risk uh, satisfies uh, this asymptotic equality, these asymptotic equalities. And uh, I have uh, some remarks. Here, yeah. uh, the level L K of R uh, determines the bound is the well known Pinsker constant.
and uh, for our model, our model. Uh, the convergence convergence rate uh, is given by uh, t uh, vt, uh, where vt is uh, t divided by sigma star, and uh, this rate uh, may be uh, better than the classical model. Uh, Panel plus white noise model. Because I can see the Monte Carlo simulation results. For this, uh, uh, we simulate the uh, regression model with one periodic function S of the form uh, from. Uh, 39 interval 0 1 and uh, the Ashton Olympic process noise process IT uh, is defined as following uh, and uh, for charm process that we use uh, compound Poisson process we there NT is a homogeneous Poisson process of intensity lambda, which is equal to one. And uh, y, sequence YT is uh, IID Gaussian zero one. We also use the model selection procedure with the weights parameters, uh, K and so on. Which is which I define is a slide. We define the empirical risks as uh, in these slides, and uh, in our case, we take P is equal to T, and uh, we modulate uh, 1000 uh, replications. We have uh, the following results here uh, the sample quadratic risks. Uh, the first table uh, in first table uh, we have uh, the sample quadratic risks for different optimal gamma that is uh, gamma star and uh, gamma hat which is optimal for uh, s hat estimate and uh, in table two we uh, we have the sample quadratic risks for the same optimal gamma hat and uh, we can conclude that uh, the proposed estimation uh, the proposed estimate is better And uh, then uh, we can see some graphics uh, in which uh, uh, on the left, right, uh, without uh, data, and uh, in right side with uh, uh, data yt. Uh, the first uh, in this slide we have uh, the function uh, bold line and uh, dotted line the least square estimates and uh, dashed line is uh, improved proposed proposed improved estimates for uh, t is equal to hundred. In this slide, uh, for T is equal to 500, and uh, 
we can see that the proposed estimates uh, is better than least square estimates and uh, the same results we have for t is equal to thousand and uh, we can see that uh, least square estimates tends to improved estimates when uh, t is a In this slide, uh, we have the same results for T is equal to 10,000. Uh, some references and uh, more references we can find uh, in references in these uh, publications. And uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, so thank you uh, for, for a very interesting talk. Uh, so now it is time for questions. Uh, dear participants, dear colleagues, if you have a question, please raise your hand and switch on the microphone. So I have a question. Uh, is there uh, any uh, special reason to consider the discrete time observation on the uniform grid, or the only reason is that uh, it simplifies the analysis a lot? Uh, we can uh, consider the uh, not uh, uniform uh, grid for observations uh, frequency, but uh, it's technically more difficult. But uh, uh, could you increase the accuracy? Do you think uh, it is possible to increase the accuracy when considering non-uniform grid? Yes, but uh, in this case, uh, we need uh, some special basis function because uh, we need uh, that the basic function on this grid to be orthonormal, I understand. Yes, that. yes. Uh, which satisfies 10 condition. Okay, an another question. Uh, what uh, do, do your results uh, cover the standard Gaussian case without Levy part? Uh, yes, of course. If uh, in this uh, in equation two we set row two is equal to zero and we have uh, the Gaussian model. Okay, it's thank you. Be a Gaussian model, and if we uh, also uh, put a is equal uh, to zero, and we have a uh, Gaussian model uh, white signal plus white noise here, STDT plus DWT. Okay, and uh, and your results uh, show uh, also. Uh, the improvement comparing to the least squares methods. Yes. In the in the in this uh, the basic Gaussian case. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, are there any other questions? So, if uh, there is no questions, let us thank the speaker. Thank you. And uh, we will meet again at uh, 11.50. So now we have a small uh, break. Thank you. We can uh, continue. And the next uh, talk 
uh, by Pavel Yeskov uh, from Stiklov Mathematical Institute. Uh, the title is Limit of the Smallest Eigenvalue of a Large Dimensional Sample Covariance Matrix for Spherical and Related Distributions. Please, Pavel, you have 30 minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, my talk uh, uh, deals with, uh, uh, belongs to the field of uh, random matrix theory. And uh, in the talk, I will consider some spectral properties of large dimensional uh, sample covariance matrices. So, the outline is as follows. I will start with the introduction, where I will define main objects of interest. Uh, then I will give uh, some basic facts about the marching capacitor law and the marching capacitor theorem. Then I discuss uh, uh, some uh, limit theorems for the smallest taking value of uh, large uh, dimensional sample covariance matrices and present uh, the main result of this talk. Uh, then I some ideas how one can prove this result and after that i will conclude so in this talk we will consider uh, random matrices and uh, let x be uh, a p times n random matrix and we denote its columns by xk uh, we will always assume that xk are id and uh, uh, XK uh, always form uh, a random sample corresponding to some uh, random p-dimensional random vector uh, X uh, with the uh, orthonormal entries. Such such vectors uh, usually uh, are called usually uh, isotropic vectors. And uh, the main object of interest is uh, the matrix sigma um, that could be defined via uh, the matrix X uh, or uh, just an average of, uh, of this type. In random matrix theory, it is usually called a simple covariance matrix. Uh, this differs a little from uh, the usual definition in statistics, uh, just because we do not subtract sample mean from XK. Uh, usually such subtraction, su subtraction uh, do not, uh, doesn't spoil the asymptotic properties uh, of the matrices sigma. So also uh, in what follows, uh, all random object could could implicitly depend on two parameters, P and N, and I will omit uh, this dependence uh, for uh, simplicity. So the main question is, uh, how do the eigenvalues of uh, the sample covariance uh, matrix sigma behave asymptotically when P and N are large? And this question, uh, is very uh, important for, uh, for example, in statistics. Uh, in, in, in recent papers, it was shown that uh, uh, the, behavior, spec, uh, spectral, the behavior of uh, spectrum of uh, matrices uh, sigma uh, play uh, a crucial role when analyzing many statistical uh, procedures for big data, uh, especially based on the least uh, square uh, methods. And uh, of course, uh, if P is large but fixed and N tends to infinity, uh, by the law of large numbers, uh, this average will converge to the expectation uh, uh, of, of, the, of one term, everything is ID, and uh, so the sample covariance matrix will converge uh, to the identity matrix and all its eigenvalues will converge to uh, one, uh, almost surely, this probability one. So, if we, however, if we allow uh, the dimension P uh, 
uh, to grow at the same rate as the sample size n, uh, then uh, the asymptotic behavior uh, will be dramatically different. Let us illustrate it by the following example. Consider a small uh, ratio, this let rho, rho is a limiting ratio of p over n, and uh, suppose it is small, for example, one hundredth. And consider Gaussian case. Uh, where x is uh, the standard normal random vector. In this case, the weak limit of the empirical spectral distribution of uh, sample covariance matrices sigma exists, and uh, this empirical spectral distribution is defined by this formula. Uh, so we just take delta measures uh, concentrated uh, at the eigenvalues of uh, the matrix uh, sigma and uh, take an, an average. And uh, uh, the weak limit of this distribution exists and it is absolutely continuous and has a support, uh, this support. So we see quite a big distortions even when uh, the limiting ratio is small. The, the, the marching capacitor theorem uh, basically answers uh, the question uh, what's, uh, how this limiting uh, spectral distribution looks like. So let us formulate it. Suppose P grows uh, at the same rate as the sample size. And uh, suppose also that uh, uh, the random, random vector x is uh, isotropic. And we also uh, suppose that x satisfies some nice conditions, we'll, uh, which uh, we will specify a little bit later. Uh, and uh, the Martian capacitor theorem states that uh, with probability 1, the empirical spectrum measure of uh, sample covariance matrices sigma uh, converge uh, weak, uh, weakly to uh, so-called the marching capacitor distribution with parameter rho. And this uh, limiting distribution in general has discrete part and absolutely continuous part. The discrete part appears when uh, uh, this limiting ratio rho is uh, more or equal, uh, is greater or, or equal to one. As, as it is easy to see uh, when pair P is uh, uh, greater than one, this matrix sigma will be degenerate. So uh, uh, there, are, there will be uh, uh, zero eigenvalue. So in this case, uh, we will have discrete part. So discrete part uh, is as follows, and uh, absolutely continuous part could be defined by the following formula. Uh, so the, the support of this distribution uh, is A, is the segment AB. Here we, he, we have an illustration uh, how the absolute continuous part of uh, the marching capacitor distribution looks like for different parameter values. Again, uh, let me remind you that uh, in the case when P, P is fixed, uh, all eigenvalues converge to 1. So uh, when P is fixed, this dis limiting distribution is simply a measure. Uh, in uh, concentrated at one. So what about conditions, sufficient condition for the Marshall capacitor theorem? There are a lot of uh, different uh, conditions in the literature, but uh, the most, uh, I think, general sufficient condition uh, is uh, so-called concentration of quadratic forms or simply weak law of large numbers for quadratic forms. Uh, of the following time, uh, type. 
suppose a uh, p is a sequence of any uh, square matrices p times p uh, with uh, this bounded spectral norms and uh, uh, we have the following asymptotic relation for uh, the vector x. Uh, this asymptotic re relation means that quad uh, the quadratic form uh, concentrates near its expectation, which is trace of the matrix, up to uh, a term which uh, is O small of P. This condition implicitly used in uh, the classical marching capacitor uh, paper, and uh, also it appeared uh, in many uh, other works uh, of Kirko, Gupta, Bainjo, Payer and Pastor, Adam Chuck. And uh, one of the final results is uh, in my paper, where I show that this condition becomes necessary and sufficient condition for the marching capacitor theorem if we consider not the whole class of matrices A, but uh, the, some, some restricted class. Let us, let us give some simple examples, examples of uh, uh, vectors X satisfying this condition. The classical example is uh, X with uh, uh, independent zero mean uh, random entries satisfying the Lindenberg condition. Uh, the next uh, more recent example uh, is also very interesting, uh, is uh, X uh, having a zero mean log concave distribution. Uh, that means that uh, the density of X exists and uh, the, its logarithm is, conca is concave function. A more recent interesting example is given in the, the papers of Litova and Brisson, Vershin and Zhao, and uh, where the authors consider so-called random tensor model uh, and uh, X uh, being a vectorized version uh, of a random tensor uh, that is generated by uh, some ID random vectors of uh, the growing dimension M and uh, uh, with IAD zero mean entries having finite force moment. Here the number, uh, the number of factors in this tensor products uh, D also is also allowed to grow with N. Other examples of uh, vectors X include uh, vectors with weak dependent uh, components and so on. So, uh, this is uh, the marching capacitor theorem uh, show, shows uh, how the bulk of the spectrum of uh, the sample covariance matrices behave asymptotically. But what about the extreme eigenvalues of, of the sample covariance matrices? Uh, this uh, we, here we have quite different situations uh, for the smallest eigenvalue and for the largest eigenvalue. Just because the analysis of the smallest eigenvalue requires uh, the finiteness of the second moment only. Uh, it should be compared to the case of the largest uh, eigenvalue when uh, where you need uh, to uh, to have at least force moments. Let us recall some classical results. The first result is a famous pi in theorem, uh, who proved that if the entries of each vector x in the definition of the sample covariance uh, matrices uh, are ID copies. Uh, of some random variable with zero mean and unit variance and uh, finite force moment. Then in this case, under the condition of the marching capacitor theorem, uh, in the non-trivial case where uh, the parameter rho is strictly less than one, otherwise uh, this minimal eigenvalue will be zero. Um, so the, the buy-in uh, 
theorems state that the minimal eigenvalue converges to uh, the left edge of the support of the Marchinka pasture distribution uh, with uh, probability one. So it took uh, more than 20 years to get rid of this fourth moment condition. And uh, it was done in the work of Tikhomirov in 2015. Uh, and uh, he proved that the Bayan theorem holds without this condition. So what about more general case uh, of condition C? That, uh, the more, that is the most general condition for uh, the marching capacitor theorem. So recently, uh, Shafai and Tikhomirov uh, uh, published a paper in, the probability, uh, in probability theory in the related fields, uh, where they uh, proved uh, the following theory. They assume that condition C holds Condition C, I recall it that uh, this is uh, a weak law of large numbers for quadratic forms. Also, they uh, impose some technical uniform integrability condition of this type. And uh, uh, so they proved that under the conditions of the marching capacitor theorem, the minimal, uh, the smallest eigenvalues uh, converge uh, to the left edge of the support of the marching capacitor distribution in probability. So our goal uh, was to first uh, to strengthen the result of Shafai Tikhomirov by replacing the convergence in probability uh, by the almost sure convergence, and second to analyze a more general model. Uh, let me motivate this more general model. So uh, note that the marching capacitor th theorem is an example of a universal property. Uh, it shows uh, that uh, when the limiting behavior of the spectrum of uh, the sample covariance matrix sigma is the same as in the case of uh, the Gaussian case with uh, a standard normal uh, X. So its natural generalization uh, is the case of spherical distributions uh, corresponding to the products of uh, standard normal ran uh, random vectors and uh, uh, random variables being independent of these random vectors. If, you, uh, if we again look at condition C, uh, we will see that this doesn't hold when you consider spherical uh, distributions. Indeed, if we multiply x by some random variable eta, then here we will have eta squared and, uh, my, uh, and uh, uh, these quadratic forms will concentrate near the trace of the matrix multiplied by eta squared. So this condition doesn't hold for spherical distributions. And uh, let us consider uh, this type of uh, model, uh, condition C. And the main result of this paper, uh, of, of this talk, uh, is as follows. Let uh, condition S hold, and uh, also uh, con conditions C and uh, the uniform integrability condition U uh, hold for a random vector X replaced by the random vector Z. Uh, from condition C, and uh, P grows at the same rate as the sample size N, uh, then um, we could comp uh, imp uh, explicitly compute the limit of uh, the smallest eigenvalues uh, of sample covariance matrices sigma by the following formula. And uh, one should know that if uh, e eta equals one, uh, this suprema appearing here uh, uh, is achieved in this point. And if you 
just plug in in this formula this point, you will get the left edge of the the support of the marching capacitor distribution. So, how one could the result? So basically, we have an upper bound, uh, and a, we need to derive an appropriate upper bound uh, on the minimal eigenvalue, and uh, an appropriate uh, lower bound. The upper, an upper bound follows from a more general version of the marching capacitor theorem for uh, spherical type distributions. Uh, again, let us consider a spherical uh, model and um, uh, spherical model. And uh, I, I'm sorry that there should be, of course, another condition, another condition of this type. Uh, uh, condition C and U must hold for X replaced by Z, and also condition S should hold. So in this case, uh, the empirical spectral distribution uh, of, uh, of the sample covariance matrix sigma uh, converges weakly to some limiting distribution uh, whose TLTS transform uh, could be defined as a unique solution in upper half plane of the following equation. And uh, as follows from, from my previous result, the left edge of the support of this limiting measure is exactly uh, the same quantity uh, as uh, here in our main result. So this is uh, this theorem, the, this more general version immediately applies an upper bound for the minimal eigenvalue. What about the low bound? Uh, so the low bound is the hard part of the proof. Uh, it is obtained by the uh, Shriva-Stava-Vershinian method, uh, which goes back to Batson, Spielmann, Shriva-Stava, with the key modifications of Shafai Tikhomirov and some arguments from uh, the paper of uh, uh, my paper. So basically, the idea is to construct sequentially for any value of parameter S, uh, a sequence of random shifts delta K, uh, such that um, these matrices AK are positive definite. Um, so we construct it sequentially. Uh, every time we add a term to the sum, we will increase uh, eigenvalues of this matrix. matrix. And uh, so the idea is to subtract uh, some uh, de some delta uh, multiply the identity matrix matrix uh, in a way that this difference uh, uh, should stay positive definite. Uh, this uh, assumption immediately implies that the minimal eigenvalue of this sum uh, is uh, greater than uh, this uh, this quantity. Okay. The next uh, we need to control. Uh, traces of the inverses of these matrices in this way, and uh, some some uh, technical assumptions on uh, uh, the shifts delta k. And basically, the main assumption is that uh, the expectation, conditional expectation uh, of the shift should be uh, not uh, less than uh, this value. If you dig in, in uh, dig in into the proofs, uh, you will see that this value is some kind of maximum value that could be achieved uh, if uh, if you want to to construct delta k and uh, uh, such that this condition holds. So also we, we here we have some uh, regularizing sequence, but uh, the aggregate impact of this regularizing sequence is small comparing to n. So basically, these conditions uh, jointly imply uh, 
easily imply the following lower bound uh, on the minimal eigenvalue of the sample of the sample covariance matrix sigma. So here we just need to divide everything by n and uh, uh, then uh, tend n to infinity. So this is about the main idea of the proof. So in conclusion, uh, we could say that uh, we have extended the marching capacitor theorem uh, for the case of spherical distributions. Of course, uh, there are in the literature some uh, variants of this theorem, but uh, in our opinion, uh, it is uh, the most general because we use uh, this condition C. And uh, also we extend, uh, we have extended the result of Shafai Tikhamirov to these spherical type distributions. In particular, when eta equals to one, our results imply the classical buy-in theorem under the second moment assumption. As a future, uh, uh, at as a direction for the future research, uh, I uh, want to stay the following open question. So everything, ever, all the results are spoiled by this technical uh, condition U, which is simply the uniform uh, integrability of some squared scalar products. And uh, there is no such condition in the marching capacitor theorem. And uh, it is uh, quite a natural desire to get rid of this condition. So, thank you. This is the end. Thank you. Thank you very much for an interesting talk. Please, uh, questions or comments? Uh, Vladimir, sorry, I raised a hand, but no. Well, do you see my hand? He is yes. yes, yes. Uh, please, your question. Yes, so my question is simple. So, in high dimensional framework, uh, you consider the case then dimension P uh, ratio of dimension and N tends to some constant. Is it possible that uh, this ratio tends to infinity or not? But uh, the answer is uh, very simple. Uh, the minimal eigenvalue will be zero, just because uh, if you consider the definition of the sample covariance matrix, uh, the, yes. which, which is the product of P times N, uh, multiply by n times p. So the rank of this matrix is uh, me, uh, uh, so, uh, is bounded by the minimum of these um, two numbers. And when uh, p is greater than n, so the ratio p divided by n goes to infinity, this will be degenerate matrix. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. More question? Okay, I have one question. Uh, pardon. Uh, there are some conditions under which uh, the minimal eigenvalue has a strictly positive lower bound. Yes, yes, just a lot of condition and uh, I also obtained the, the sharp or optimal condition uh, in my paper in 2014. Uh, uh, yes, it is just a huge literature and uh, in my opinion, this uh, Shrivastava Vershinin method is uh, the, in fact, the most effective when bounding uh, uh, this minimal eigenvalue. So, yes, uh, this paper of Yaskov, uh, I, will, I, I could share a link <laughs> uh, to this paper, uh, th there are some bounds and they are optimal uh, in terms of uh, the vector x and in terms of this ratio p divided by n. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much.
our time is finished. And uh, the next talk, please. Кто будет следующий доклад представлять? Сага Кайвазян. Да, здравствуйте. Пожалуйста, загружайте. Так, тут как? Надо вот... На стрелочку нажать, да? Вот. Да, да, на стрелочку. Видно презентацию? Пока нет. Вам нужно нажать на стрелочку, после чего выбрать окно, которое вы хотите поделиться. Либо рабочий стол. А сейчас? Да, да. теперь все видно. Отлично. Только можно увеличить. Немножко. Так, нормально? А, пожалуйста, перейдите в полноэкранный режим. У меня полноэкранный. А, тогда сделайте следующее. Отключите демонстрацию и вместо демонстрации какого-то конкретного окна попробуйте демонстрировать весь рабочий стол. Дело в том, что при переходе в полноэкранный режим у вас э, не изменяется окно. У вас как бы добавляется новое. Сейчас. Значит, я закрываю доступ. Так, еще раз нажимаю. Да, и теперь нужно выбрать рабочий стол. Весь экран. Так, вот рабочий стол. А. О. Окей. Так лучше? Да, так лучше. Теперь не видим все. Отлично. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next talk uh, is a multivariate central limit theorem for weighted sums by Ivazian Sagak and uh, Vladimir Ulyanov. Our uh, presenter is Ivazian, Sagak Ivazian. Please, you have 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, this report is about uh, the rate of convergence of the weighted sums of independent and identically distributed random vectors in k-dimensional space. At first, let's consider normalized sum of random variables in a one-dimensional case. Let x1, x2, x n be independent random variables with zero mean, uh, unit variance, and finite third epsilon moment. Let's set be the standard Gaussian random variable with zero mean and unit variance. The error bound of approximation for distribution of the normalized sum of random variables by the standard normal law can be estimated by Various theorem. Under conditions above, the following inequality holds. The uh, supremum of modulus of difference between distribution function of normalized sum and standard normal distribution function is less than C multiplied by gamma in power of 3 divided by square root of n. Here, C is a universal constant. It means that uh, rate of convergence in the central limit theorem is of order big O of 1 divided by square root of n. Uh, this theorem was independently discovered by two mathematicians, Andrew Perry in 1941 and Carl Gustav Sten in 1942. Uh, so the result is more than 70 years old and is still not optimal and strike a lot of issues associated with improving the estimate 
of the convergence rate. For example, the exit uh, value of the universal constant C is still unknown and is still being refined. But uh, there is upper bound of this constant which calculated values have decreased markedly over the years. There are also a number of tasks relating to, uh, related to improving this bound for a certain class of distribution distributions. This result under some condition can be extended to key dimensional space. Let x1, x2, xn be independent random vectors with zero mean, unit covariance matrix and uh, finite third epsilon moment and, set, and let z be the standard Gaussian random vector with zero mean and unit covariance matrix. If we consider the convergence over all Borel sets in RK, then in this case we have this distance in total variation. It means that if distribution of X1 is, is discrete, then it does not matter how many sums we consider, total variation distance, distance is equal to one. Therefore, there can be no convergence to the normal distribution for some, for some of arbitrary sequence of random vectors. But at uh, the same time, considering the sets of multidimensional rectangles of class of sets is Borel conv convex sets for which most of the result results that are valid for one dimensional sp space carry over to a multi-dimensional one. So denote by handwritten B the class of all Borel convex sets in their case. For these types of sets, Sazonov obtained the following error bound for normalized sum of independent identically distributed random vectors. Supremum of modulus of difference between distribution of normalized sum and distribution of standard Gaussian random vector over all Borel convex sets is less than C of K multiplied by gamma inferred power divided by square root of n. Here c of k depends on k, depends on k and it is important to note uh, that the search for the type of dependence of the universal constant on the dimensional k is a big area for study. Uh, so, Sazonov bound above is similar as in one dimensional space and is optimal, optimal one in general. Moreover, the rate big, uh, big O of 1 divided by square root of n may not be improved under higher order moment assumptions. Even when x1, x2, xn are symmetric random variables, the bound is sharp. For example, if the random variables are symmetric Bernoulli variables, for, for instance, the probability that the sum of this sequence is equal to zero is approximately equal, equal to square root of n divided by pi multiplied by n for large even n. Therefore, the bound is an asymptotically optimal in this case up to the value of the constant c. Uh, nevertheless, the situation is different when we consider a weighted sum of this type, uh, where sum of square theta j is equal to zero. For these weighted sums, Clark sodium in their in their recent result showed an example of weights for which the order of error bound between distribution of weighted sum to standard Gaussian distribution is one divided by n. 
Moreover, they proved that the inequality holds for most data in the sense of the normalized the back measure on the unisphere. Under a for a moment assumption, they proved the following theorem in one dimensional case. For any row less than one and greater than zero, there exists a set on unisphere with measure greater than one minus rho and uh, constant c of rho depending only on rho such that for any theta from this set one has the supremum of modulus of difference between distribution function of weighted sum and standard normal distribution function is less than c of rho multiplied by Delta in four power divided by square root of uh, divided by n, where delta in four power is the first absolute moment of x one, and uh, c of rho is less than universal cos uh, universal constant c multiplied by logarithm in power two of one divided by rho. As we can see, typical convergence rate of the error bound of approximation for distribution of weighted sum of random vectors by, uh, by the standard normal law is equal to big O of one divided one divided by n. Uh, Clark sorting result uh, can be significantly improved uh, with additional restriction on the distrib distributions of random variables. For example, Babkov refined the rates of approximation for distributions of the sums up to order big O of one in power mi in power minus three divided by two by using the Ezra correction of the four order for random variables with finite fifth fifth absolute moment. Also, Götze, Ulyanov and Naumov generalized Clark-Tag and Sodian result for a class of sequence of symmetric functions of many variables. As a sequence, the authors uh, suggested general approach to construct so-called non-asymptotic estimates for weighted sums of random variables. We extend uh, Clark-Tag sodium result to the multivariate space Rk with k greater than one, and uh, show that in this case the rate of the, of convergence in the multivariate central limit theorem is of order O big of one divided by n up to logarithmic factor. And, and in the above notation, we formulate our result. Let x1, x2, xn be independent, identically distributed random vectors in Rk with zero mean, unit covariant matrix, and finite absolute moment. Let Z be standard Gaussian random vector in RK, RK with zero mean and unit covariant matrix. Denote by B the class of four polar complex sets in RK, then for any row less than one and greater than zero, Z exists a set with measure greater than one minus row and constant C of row of and k depending on k and rho only such that for any theta from this uh, from this set the following inequality holds supremum of, of modules of difference between distributions distribution of weighted sum of random vectors and distribution of standard Gaussian random vector over all boil convex sets is less than 
c of k multiplied by delta in four power multiply square root of logarithm of n in power k divided by square root of n. We can see that logarithmic factor has appeared in, the, in rate of convergence. But it is necessary to mention that uh, as in one dimensional case, uh, C of K and Rho uh, is equal to C of K multiplied by C of Rho and uh, less than C of K multiplied by logarithm uh, in power 2 of 1 divided by Rho and C of rho does not depend on dimensional k. The proof, the proof of the current, uh, the proof of the current theorem is based uh, the proof of the current theorem is based directly on uh, Clark-Tag and certain result for one dimensional case and on Pratacharya, Rangarao and Sazonov monographs about multi-dimensional central limit theorem for independent random vectors. In the first instance, the following inequality is applied for probability measures of weighted sum of random vectors phi theta and, uh, and multidimensional standard Gaussian distribution. Modulus of integral of uh, set B of difference of distribution between weighted sum and multidimensional Gaussian distribution less than C multiplied by modulus of integral over set B of convolution of K and difference between distribution of weighted sum and distribution uh, of multidimensional standard Gaussian vector plus C, C2 of K multiplied by epsilon. Where K is a kernel function and uh, epsilon is greater than zero. Uh, C1 and C2 are universal constants and C2 depends on dimensional of dimension of space. If we put epsilon equal to C multiplied by delta, multiplied by delta in power four, divided by n, by n and choose the kernel function in a special way, uh, then the following relation will hold for its characteristic function. It is equal to zero when norm of t greater than n divided by delta in power four. The main difference uh, from the one-dimensional case in the proof of the theorem for weighted sum of independent random vector arises after the application of the standard method of characteristic functions. The method is used to replace direct estimation of the residual of distribution functions to estimation of the residual of corresponding characteristic functions. Uh, knowing that Fourier transform of the convolution of two functions is given by the product of the Fourier transform of each of them, uh, we get uh, the inequal. Uh, the, here phi that is the characteristic function of weighted sum of random vectors. 
if we consider the one dimensional case with a typical set of the form of interval from A to B, then we can use Fubini theorem and switch the order of integration. The integral over x is taken explicitly and the fact that the modulus of the complex exponent is equal to 1 and characteristic function of kernel function is equal to 0 out of the interval from minus n divided by delta in 4 power to plus n divided by delta in 4 power. Let obtain the following chain of inequalities. As a result, it is necessary to estimate only the integral over, over the interval above of modulus of difference of the characteristic functions divided by t. Uh, but unfortunately, in multidimensional case, it is difficult to estimate in, this, in the same manner, especially for an arbitrary boil convex set P. The simplest alternative approach is to divide P into the set P1 and P2. Uh, B1, B2, and consider two terms independently to estimate the integral over a set B1. Uh, we use the fact that the residual of this distribution tends to zero. In the second case, we estimate separately the tail behavior of the probability distributions of weighted sum and the distribution of multidimensional standard normal vector. Uh, if uh, denote lambda k as a Lebesgue measure in a k, as was shown above, uh, at first we use Fourier transform, uh, then estimate the complex exponent S1 and integrate over the set P1. In this case, the integral is equal to the mesh of this set. From the definition of this set, it also follows that its mesh is less than volume of multidimensional sphere with radius r. And now we have to estimate the integral of modulus of difference of the characteristic functions only. And uh, similarly, as in one dimensional case, we divided the integration area into three parts and evaluated each of them separately. In each part, different technique is used. Uh, for example, in the first, we just use Taylor series. Of the, uh, of the characteristic function of weighted sum of random vectors. So after calculating the estimates for these three terms, we can conclude that the integral of modulus of characteristic function of weighted sum of random vector and the characteristic function of the multidimensional standard Gaussian random vectors is less than C of k rho multiplied by delta n power 4 divided by n. In order to complete the proof, it remains to estimate the integral over the set of P2. Here, y is a random vector with a distribution function k and phi, uh, phi k, phi k of x is the probability density uh, density function of the standard Gaussian random vector in RK. At first, we use the definition of kernel function to get estimation for the last term, 
Then we simplify and reduce the task of estimation from multidimensional to one dimensional case for the first term. As a result, uh, we obtained obtain bound of the integral over the set P2. We can see that uh, the first and second terms depend on N. The third term on, depends on radius R only. Collecting the Collecting the obtained estimates for the two terms above, it remains to choose optimal radius R. Here, the last term has appeared from the estimation of the integral over set P1 and depends on radius and on N. Finally, if we put radius in this way, then we can, we can conclude that zero bound of approximation for distribution of the weighted sum of independent identically distributed random vectors by the standard multidimensional normal law is of order O big of one divided by n up to logarithmic factor. Uh, the same error bound can be obtained for weighted sum of independent but not identically distributed random vectors. In this case, every sum of four absolute moments is used in the bound. And uh, now we are working on the second proof in which we are trying to remove the logarithmic factor and get the rate of convergence of order to big O of 1 divided by n in multidimensional space. Here, reference list, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sagak. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. And uh, we have three minutes for questions or comments, please. Vladimir Vasilich. Да, да, добрый день, я здесь, да, я здесь. Ага, у вас поднята рука просто. Нет, я не поднимал. В данном Ах, случае там... ничего нет. Опускайте руку. Мою. Dear colleagues, do you have questions, comments? No? Thank you again. Сагак. Okay. So maybe, maybe can I give you just uh, in two minutes I give some uh, some remarks about this result. So okay, you see, please. yes, so you see, Clardac student result uh, was uh, very remarkable and uh, was uh, and specialist. Uh, Okay, there are special cases then we have uh, uh, conversions better than one divided by square root of n in central limit theory. It was known, but uh, it was very interesting to find out that for weighted sums, almost in all cases, and the exact formulation was given by Sagak during his talk. Uh, for almost all weighted sums, the rate of convergence is not of order one divided by square root of n, but one divided by n. It was surprising, in fact. And uh, in one dimensional case, as Sagak mentioned in his talk, uh, this direction was developed further by Babkov paper. And the Babkov paper was mentioned in the reference by Sagak, and so if somebody is interested, you can find uh, corresponding results. Thank you.
Okay. Thank you. Предлагаю вашу презентацию запустить. Так, давайте я попробую. Так. Как вы видите, сейчас я переведу полно. Видно, да. Так, все нормально? Отлично, видно. Окей. Okay. Uh, so, we continue. And uh, the next talk is two-sided bounds for PDF maximum of a sum of weighted heat square variables uh, by uh, Vladimir Ulyanov and uh, uh, The speaker is uh, Vladimir Vasilyevich Ulyanov, please. Thank you very much. So uh, this is so-called two-sided bounds for probability density function of probability density function maximum of a sum of weighted high square variables. And uh, this is joint work with Sergey Babkov from University of Minnesota and Alexei Naumov from uh, High School of Economics University. And uh, before I start to talk about uh, our last results, I would like to describe the frame or the problems where these kind of results could be interesting and useful. And in fact, my talk will be relatively simple, but uh, I think that some results and some inequalities which will be given during this talk will be useful for other people as well and could be applied fruitfully. Well, and so let us start from motivation. Why know the bounds for maximum of high school variables are interesting. Assume classical probability problems classical probability problem connected with central limit theorem. So as it was already mentioned several times during this day, let y1, y2, and so on, yn, be ID random vectors in p-dimensional space <coughs> with the zero mean and covariance operator sigma. Let x be a Gaussian random vector in p-dimensional space with zero mean and covariance operator sigma. And our aim is to compare probability that normalized sum of y i y n divided by square root of n hits a set a, that this probability is close to probability that Gaussian random vector hits the same set A. And what is more interesting, to find out class of Borel sets, which we denote here by C, where we can say that this supremum tends to zero as n tends to infinity. And uh, quite natural requirements for class C should be that C is uh, invariant under affine symmetric transformations. This is clear because we can consider not only the whole sum, but uh, parts of the sum, and we can multiply uh, these uh, subsums by different constants. And so uh, from here, we, we have a requirement about uh, invariance under affine transformations. And the second requirement is that C is an invariant undertaken epsilon neighborhood for all epsilon. So we can come from set A to some set A epsilon, so epsilon extension of set A. And another set of conditions are concerning the difference between epsilon extension of set A and set 
itself. So let x sub zero be a Gaussian random vector in p-dimensional space in RP with zero mean and identity covariance operator i. Assume that class C is such that for all sets A and any epsilon and any positive epsilon, we have these two inequalities that probability that x sub zero and x sub zero, this is our Gaussian random vector, uh, is inside epsilon extension of set A, then it's not larger than AP multiplied by epsilon. So behavior with respect to epsilon is epsilon. And this epsilon is multiplied by some constant AP, which is called so-called the, the, which is so-called isoperimetric constant. For instance, if you consider at C class of all convex sets, then it's known and it was proved by Ball in 1993 that AP is not larger than 4 divided, multiplied by P to power 1 fourth. But what is most important is the following, and it was proved by Benkus in 2005, that if C satisfies the above, above conditions, then delta of C, and we were interested in the rate of convergence to zero of delta of C. Then in this case, delta of C is not larger than some absolute constant C, multiplied by one plus AP, the third absolute moment of y one divided by square root of n. And so it means that as soon as we know the epsilon extension, Gaussian measure of epsilon extension of set A, then we can give some conclusion about behavior of delta of C, rate of convergence of delta and C. And so it means that A, P plays the crucial role in the whole problems of uh, getting non-asymptotic bounds. And so we come to the following problem, as we already remarked that, for instance, let psi and eta be Gaussian elements in a Hilbert space H with a zero mean and covariance operator sigma psi and sigma eta. And for any A, for any element A in Hilbert space, we are interested in bounding for small delta, this delta band. And so we get so-called anti-concentration inequality. Related problem, and uh, here it's not uh, it's not exactly clear immediately why the first problem, why delta band and problem of Gaussian comparison are connected. But I explain you <coughs> it in several seconds. And so the first problem is anti-concentration inequality. It's connected with epsilon extension of set A, or delta extension in this case, and uh, related problem, Gaussian comparison. So comparing two probabilities for <coughs> two different <laughs> Gaussian measures. And motivation for the second problem, motivation for the second problem, for the problem of uh, why it's interesting to get bound for uh, this difference can be given in some problems in statistics. So I give here only the list of these problems, but uh, I explain you later where you can find the details about this problem and why it's connected with the Gaussian comparison. So bootstrap validity for maximum likelihood estimates, 
Gaussian prior impact and linear Gaussian modeling, or in more general, in modern data analysis. In modern data analysis. So in all these directions, quite often you, you meet the problem that you have to compare two measures. You have to compare two measures, in particular two Gaussian measures. And how this problem are usually solved? Usually, uh, people apply Pinsker inequality. According to Pinsker inequality, we have that for any probability measures P1 and P2 on some measurable space, we may write the following inequality, where KL of P1, P2, this is so-called Kulbach-Leibler divisions between P1 and P2. But you see, here we consider supremum are the all sets from class F. For instance, if we are on the, uh, if omega is Euclidean space, then in fact, what we have on the left hand side, this is total variation, total variation. And about the Kulbach-Leibler divergence, in the case then, a Gaussian, so psi is normal with uh, zero mean and covariance separated sigma psi, eta is normal with zero mean and covariance separated sigma eta, then in this case, Kulbach-Leiber divergence is straightly calculated and it equals one half Arbenius norm of difference of two matrices, W or operators in general, W and I. But the problem is that this operate, the operated W, as you see, this is sigma psi to power minus one half, sigma eta multiplied by sigma psi minus one half. And so it means that in many situations it gives very crude, very crude bounds. Why? Because matri matrix or operator sigma psi can have very small eigenvalues. And these very small eigenvalues we have in the power, in negative power. And so it means that on the left hand side it's something which is not larger than one, but on the right hand side, you have some very small numbers in negative power. It looks very strange. And so it means that it gives very good bound in many cases, but uh, at the same time, for many cases, it's not necessary to have total variation distance between P1 and P2, but it's enough to consider as we remarked in here, it's necessary to compare only probability uh, probability to hit some balls for Gaussian for Gaussian measures. Well, and uh, here this is just notation for Schatten one norm. So this is trace norm, and uh, I just remind you. One of our results uh, obtained in last year, or published at least, published in last year. So if Xi and Eta are two Gaussian elements in Hilbert space, with the zero mean and covariance is sigma Xi and sigma Eta, then it's possible to write the following inequality. And as you see, C1 here is. Uh, depending on spectrum of sigma psi and sigma eta. But dependence is only on the first two largest eigenvalues. Two largest, not all, not all spectrum of eigenvalues, but only first two largest. So this is much better what you get, what you get uh, in this case. What you get in this case, applying Pinsky inequality. 
Well, in fact, this result would be improved further, and uh, we shall discuss why in what direction it could be improved. But uh, I uh, would like to mention as well our result concerning delta band. So if Xi is a Gaussian element in Hilbert space H, with zero mean and covariance operator sigma, then we are interested what can we say about this delta band? And the answer is given uh, in our paper, <coughs> which was published in last year. And so you see, again, as in the case of comparison of two Gaussian measures, we have here also dependence in denominator. We have dependence only on two first eigenvalues of covariance operated sigma. First two eigenvalues. Well, and what, what is connection between this result and, and uh, this result? The connection is the following, that the appearance of these factors, appearance of these factors, and for instance, appearance of these two largest eigenvalues are connected exactly with bounds of density of uh, weighted high square variables, sum of weighted high square variables, exactly. So in this, in this theorem, in this inequality, and in this inequality, the part which gives you gives us this dependence are going straightly for the <coughs> inequality for density of sum of <coughs> weighted chi square random variables. Well, and as you see, in both theorems, we have upper bounds. We have upper bounds. And so, surely it's interesting to, to find out what can they say about lower bounds, about lower bounds. And about lower bounds was our old result obtained in 1996, where we got two sided bounds for density function of uh, square of norm of xi minus a and the estimates were sharp in the sense that starting from large enough x the ratio of upper bound to lower bound equals a and doesn't depend on any parameters of distribution of xi minus a norm square well the estimates imply two-sided bounds for probability so the Tails, and uh, during the proof, we took into account the multiplicity of the largest eigenvalue. Well, everything seems okay except except that uh, the low bounds was obtained under quite <coughs> quite strict conditions. So it was not directly it was not uh, fairly to tell about these uh, bounds as two-sided bounds, because low bounds were obtained under quite strict conditions. Well, this is one remark. <coughs> and another remark, Xi is again Gaussian random element, uh, covariance operator sigma Xi, eigenvalues lambda one, lambda two, and so on. and for density, we write here, and we, I draw your attention to denominator. See, in denominator, this is not only already square root of product lambda one and lambda two, but uh, we consider the sum of squares of lambda one square plus lambda two square plus and so on, multiplied by similar sum starting from second term, and the product is taken in power one divided by four. As a <coughs> consequence, <coughs> we get, so as upper bound, we can write here surely C divided by square root of product lambda one and lambda two. 
Well, and now about lower bounds, about two-sided bounds, two-sided bounds. So, first uh, few notations. So assume that ZK are standard normal and consider weighted sum. This is exactly connected uh, with the uh, behavior of square of norm of Gaussian random element and Hilbert space. And uh, uh, if we are in the, okay, it has a continuous probability density function denoted by P of X and defined by M of W0 supremum of this density function. And it happens that for this maximum for M of W0, we can give two-sided bounds, two-sided bounds. And as you see, as uh, A1, we take sum of all lambda k square and a2 this is the similar sum starting from the second term so it means that this upper bound this upper bound which was obtained earlier was uh, additionally given lower bound of the same exactly of the same form exactly the same form and for constant C0 and C1 in upper part and in the lower part, we give, we give also bounds. In fact, this result could be extended to more general weighted sums, more general weighted sums. Uh, when we shift Z eyes by some numbers AIs. And in this case, and similarly, and similarly we denote by MWA, uh, maximum of density function of this random variable, of this random variable, and we give two-sided bounds. In this case, we consider the most common case, the most common case then, what does it mean lambda one square is not larger than one third multiplied by A1? It means that, in fact, we have not uh, one or two eigenvalues, which takes the whole trace of matrix. This is the only mean or another, interpretation we can say that we consider at least three-dimensional space and again here you if you compare left side and right side the form is the same and the difference only the difference only in constant well so what is important to note that the lower bounds you obtained on the base of this inequality. So we have uh, some random variable eta with a density function, and we denote by m of eta its maximum its density function, and here we have variance of random variable eta and you see this inequality states that square of maximum multiplied by variance is not less than one divided by 12. So in fact, this inequality was mentioned, just mentioned, it was not formulated as lemma as theorem, it was just mentioned in Statulaichu's paper in 1965. And, uh, this inequality is sharp in the sense that it's attained for the uniform distribution on any finite interval. So if you have, if you take 
eta is uniform distribution, then you have here just equality. And what is maybe interesting for everybody that there are multiple multi-dimensional extension of this inequality as well. They were obtained in 80s in last century. And maybe I give proof of Statulaeus inequality because it's relatively short. This is only on this slide. So assume without Uh, without losing generality, we can assume that maximum equals one and put function h of x as probability that eta differs from its expectation uh, on the quantity which is not less than x. And from the definition of h of x, we get that h of zero is one and its derivative is not less than minus two. And from here, we, we get inequality for h of x and variance. We can write in this way, in terms of function h of x. Then we consider smaller <coughs> region <laughs> of integration and Replacing h of x by its inequality, we get one divided by two. That's all. That's all. As you see, this this is quite simple. And uh, concerning uh, the upper bounds, for upper bounds we use the following lemma. So assume that sum of l alpha i's sum of squares of alpha i is equals one. And if alpha k square is not larger than one divided by m, sum m, surely m is, couldn't be uh, smaller than n. <coughs> no, it could be smaller than n, but it couldn't be larger than n. And the characteristic function f of t of random variable. Again, this is our um, weighted sum of standard normal distribution, standard normal random variables. Then for this distribution function of f t, we can write this inequality. This is also, I think, uh, would be interesting for um, many people to to use this kind of lemma because characteristic function of this kind of random variables are met in different different uh, problems in different problems and uh, okay so I, I think that my time is going to end and uh, I skip the proof of lemma because you can find them in abstracts of uh, our conference. And uh, just show you the cover page of our book uh, with Professor Fujikoshi on asymptotic analysis of information for multivariate statistics. His book was uh, published in this year. And for instance, uh, some part at least of material of talk of uh, Professor Christoph, of talk of uh, Sagak, and also uh, motivation in statistics, why it's interesting to compare Gaussian measures. You can find in this book. And this is, as you see, it's published in Springer and because many Russian universities now have have access to Springer link, you can download either the cool book or uh, separate chapters of this book. Well, and concerning about other uh, references, so this is the uh, our paper in the Cloud of, of Mathematics. This is about uh, 
closeness of Gaussian measures on both. So this is about comparison of Gaussian measures. And the extended version appeared one year later in Bernoulli, where you can find, again, different examples in statistics. Why to compare Gaussian to Gaussian measures on the bolts are interesting and how it could improve uh, the whole results. And the third, the third reference is uh, about our paper with Christopher and Prokhorov, where we got initial two-sided bounds. And uh, the last reference is Stupulevich's paper with very remarkable, as I, I would like your attention, very remarkable low bounds. Low bounds. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for you and for the interesting talk. And uh, maybe one or two minutes for questions or remarks, please. No questions. So uh, we are finished now and uh, thank you again, Vladimir Vasilich. And uh, now we have uh, a lunch break. Yes, Pavel. <coughs> yes, yes, we have a lunch break and we will meet again at uh, uh, 14.30. Okay, see you later. There are serious gap between the level of development of non-parametric estimation and non-parametric hypothesis testing. In non-parametric estimation, rates of convergence of estimators are completely explored. In non-parametric hypothesis testing, we could not say that similar results are obtained for alternatives. Goal of this talk is to provide such results for white for widespread non-parametric tests. We realize this program for Kolmogorov test, kramer van Mises test, chi-square test having increasing number of cells with sample growth, test generated L2 norms of kernel estimators, test generated quadratic forms, of estimators of Fourier coefficients. The, uh, the results to be obtained for sets of alternative in terms of distribution functions and sets of alternatives defined in terms of density functions or signals in the case of problem of signal detection in Gaussian white noise. Михаил Сергеевич, извините, что перебиваю. Просьба перейти в полноэкранный режим. Вы можете нажать кнопку Ctrl L. Ctrl L. The first approach was developed for sets of alternatives defined in terms of distribution functions. Functionals of this test statistics can be considered as distances or semi-distances 
on sets of all distribution function. It has conditions of uniform consistency of sets of alternatives are provided in terms of rate of convergence to hypothesis of these distances or semi-distances, convergence of alternatives to hypothesis. Below the nature of setup of this problem is provided. We have sequence independent really see n independent really random variables with distribution function f and we test hypothesis that the distribution function is uniform versus that distribution function function belongs to some set in the set of all distribution functions. Below the definition of uniform consistency is provided. This is standard definition of uniform consistency. We suppose that type two error probabilities plus supremum of type we suppose that type one error probabilities plus supremum of type two error probabilities is more than one. Distance method or semi-parametric approach is the following. For the functional Tn that define distance or semi-distance, one needs to test the hypothesis that the value of this function equals to zero versus alternatives that the value of this functional is greater than rho n, where rho n tends to zero as n to as n tends to infinity. Here we consider all, all distribution functions satisfies this satisfying this condition. Below, we consider this setup for Kolmogorov tests. Here, the functional T has the standard form, but in this situation, uh, we could not prove uh, uniform consistency of Kolmogorov test on such natural uh, sets of alternatives. This statement, statement uh, does not vary. Kolmogorov, we can prove only that Kolmogorov tests are uniformly consistent on sets of alternatives uh, having the following form. Here we consider the, sub, the maximum of distribution function on some subinterval of interval 0, 1. Asymptotic of supremum of type 2 probabilities of Kolmogorov test on these sets of alternatives where one can find in archive. Kramer van Mises test. We consider Kramer van Mises test statistics as natural functional de dependent on empirical distribution function empirical distribution function. The following theorem holds. Kramer van Mises tests are uniformly consistent for uh, sets of uh, for natural sets of alternatives in our pointed in our setup. This statement holds for any R for any A. About other test statistics mentioned above. For this test statistic, one can prove essentially more power, powerful result. One can prove asymptotic minimaxity of this test statistics on sets of alternatives of such a type. 
This statement hold for chi square test having increasing number of cells with growth of sample size. And two norms of kernel estimators, linear combination of squares of estimators of Fourier coefficients. These results can be considered as some ju ju justification of an implementation of distance methods in non-parametric statistics. Uh, below this results on asymptotic monomarxity is provided for chi-square test. In this setup, number of cells is om or small of n squared. And asymptotic of uh, type two error probabilities is uh, uh, given in terms of uh, test statistics of chi-square tests. Let us consider the setup of where sets of alternatives are defined in terms of densities or signals in the problem of signal detection in Gaussian white noise. He, here, the standard setup of signal detection in Gaussian white noise is, provised, is provided. The set, the alternatives are the following. We suppose that L2 norm of our alternative is greater than rho, rho sub n, and we also have a, pri a priori information uh, that alternatives belong to uh, some convex set U. In here, rho n tends to zero as n tends to infinity. In the case of hypothesis testing on a density, we consider uh, this similar problem with, in the case of hypothesis, density is uniform, and for alternatives, we consider function f that equal to density minus one. Natural question arises for which set there are uniformly consistent tests if radius rho n of deleted small balls tends to zero. Thus, we explore problem about the choice of this set. The answer is the following. Suppose set U is centisymmetric, bounded, and convex. Then there are uniformly consistent test Kn for some sequence rho n tending to zero as n tends to infinity if and only if set U is relatively compact. This result can be uh, considered as an analog similar result in non-parametric estimation. In non-parametric estimation, there exists uniformly consistent estimator only if set of parameters is compact. If, if this set of parameters is centisymmetric, the result in 
non-parametric estimation follows uh, from this result. This result is a, a obtained, was obtained for the problem of signal detection and for the problem of hypothesis testing about densities. In the case of hypothesis about densities, we suppose that any point of set U is density. Let us consider the following problem. We have test statistics uh, of above mentioned form. Let we have rho n in this setup having the order n in power minus r. The question arises, what is it is convex set U for above mentioned test statistics such that sets where N of alternatives are uniformly consistent. One, we shall call such sets of alternatives maxi sets. Uh, this is the similar definition uh, uh, has been, what has been introduced Picard and Kerkacharyan in non-parametric estimation. The answer is such sets are passive uh, bodies in, in passive space BS PS sub 2 infinity. This for chi square test L2 norms of kernel estimators, linear combination of squares of estimation of Fourier coefficients, uh, rates of dis dis distinguishability for pairs uh, of body is optimal for uh, such uh, choice of deleted ball. For grammar one misses uh, test, we have uh, different uh, values of rate of dis distinguishability. The same rate of distinguishability uh, we have also for Kolmogorov tests. However, for Kolmogorov test, we consider sets of alternative uh, and such with where an infinity norm of function f greater than rho n. In this case, maxi sets are both in holding spaces. Uh, uh, the, the rate of distinguishability is the same one as for Kramer van Mises test. And for non whole and for whole S we have Sigmund classes. The approach to study of uniform consistency of alternatives for densities is and signals is different. In order to prove uniform consistency of sets of alternatives, we show that any sequence of simple alternatives is consistent. And in order to prove uniform inconsistency of sets of alternatives, it suffices, it suffices to show that there is inconsistent sequence of simple alternatives. For this problem, we consider the following setup of hypothesis testing. The problem is to test the hypothesis that the function E 
f equals zero versus of alternatives uh, z l2 norms of function f n has the order n in power minus r. For such a setup, we want to provide comprehensive description of all consistent sequences of alternatives f n and to explore uh, their properties. In the case of problem of hypothesis testing on the density, I remind you that the function f equals the derivative of distribution function minus one. Below we provide necessary and sufficient conditions of, of, of consistency of sequences of uh, simple alternatives. Functions of any consequence, consistent sequence of alternatives Fn having given rate of convergence to hypothesis is consistent if and only if uh, function Fn admit representation as function f 1 n from maxis n from maxis n with the same rate of convergence to hypothesis the same rates is n in power minus r plus orthogonal function f n f n minus f 1 n it has any fast uh, oscillating sequence of alternatives is consistent if and only if functions of this sequence contain additive small oscillating components having the same order of a two norm. These results uh, are provided for no, not for uh, Kolmogorov test for Kolmogorov test. The result are the results are slightly different. Below we show that we can that for any epsilon given in in advance we can choose such. Sequence such maxi set at sequence of function f1 and from maxi sets that the difference of type 2 error probabilities of alternatives fn and type 2 error probabilities of function f sub 1 n is smaller than epsilon. Is smaller than epsilon. Conclusion. For problem of non-parametric hypothesis testing on di uh, distribution function, we substantiate k argumentation of distance methods. For problem of non-parametric hypothesis testing on a, a density and signal detection in Gaussian white noise, we fill the main gaps that arise in non-parametric hypothesis testing if we compare the results in this domain with the results in non-parametric estimation. We point out necessary and sufficient conditions on sets of alternatives such that uniformly consistent non-parametric tests exist for these sets. We point out the largest sets of alternatives such that above mentioned widespread non-parametric tests can distinguish these sets with a given rate of distinguishability. For above mentioned widespread non-parametric tests, we provide concise description of all consistent sequences of alternatives given having given rate of convergence to hypothesis. Thank you for attention.
Thank you very much. Any questions, comments? We have time for five minutes for questions. The full, uh, the full descriptions of these results one can find in Zapiski Naushek Seminarov for me in Russian and in Archiv. But you didn't show it uh, to us as reference in Archiv, at least uh, would be useful. Okay. Uh, this is my papers in archive for this year, for this year. This, at least, was, I can show it. And the second one, this is paper in two parts. The first part is here. The second part is devoted to the Pomagorov test. I understood correctly that you didn't consider uh, the noise with heavy tail in your work. Uh, I consider standard Gaussian noise. Only Gaussian. Only Gaussian. But there exists theory of equivalence of statistical experiment, and this theory shows uh, that almost all uh, statistical problems are equivalent to the problem of signal detection in Gaussian white noise. In particular, problems of hypothesis on parametric hypothesis on regression and non-parametric hypothesis about density. This is Larry Brown and uh, Nussbaum results. We have no questions. Uh, if nobody has questions, then I propose uh, to go to the next talk of Vivi Are you here? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, let, let's thank, first of all, uh, uh, Mikhail. Uh, yeah, she just, uh, uh, yeah, I just understand. I wait a minute. Uh, not only hold on. Please give me access to show my presentation. I can do it. Uh, anybody see it? Yeah, we we can see it. At least I can see it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we can, but please, uh, can you uh, hide a little table of teams in right corner? Excuse me? Uh, can you hide a little table of teams in the right corner? I mean, right uh, corner yes. Such a... Yes, I think yes. Uh, we, sh we see it and uh, it can make some ah, difficulties. Yes, I understand. No, mm -hmm. it's okay. It's okay. Yes, oh, that's what us. What us yes, 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 thank you. Okay. You can start for power. Uh, can I start? Yeah, you can start. Okay. Uh, my name is Igor Dionov. I work uh, in Trapeznikov Institute of Control Sciences and in Stiklov Mathematical Institute. Uh, today I want to talk about the problem of uh, external index estimation. And my talk is based on two works. Uh, the first of them uh, uh, submitted to a journal of uh, a Scandinavian journal of statistics. It's a journal. Uh, it's a joint work with Natalia Mikhailovna Markovich, 
And the second one uh, submitted myself uh, to the president of this conference. And uh, the first I want to introduce the notion of external index of uh, stationary sequence, let uh, x be a strictly stationary sequence with the uh, distribution function f uh, following the classical definition of a little better. We say that x has the external index. Uh, if for every tau, uh, every positive tau, there exists a, a sequence of le levels n such that uh, the following relation holds uh, the tail uh, behaves like uh, tau divided by n and uh, simultaneously uh, uh, dispersion function of maximum tends to uh, e in the power tau theta. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, if we consider uh, independent sequence of uh, uh, identical distributed random variables, then uh, the extremal index of this sequence will be equal to one. And uh, we all know that uh, the distribution function of maximum of the seconds is equal to uh, uh, f of u n is the power n. And then if uh, the stationary seconds ha uh, has the extremal index, then uh, this uh, equation will be the following uh, uh, probability of maximum uh, less than u n uh, is equal to f of u n is the power theta n. So uh, extremal index is uh, uh, some measure of uh, dependence uh, of extremal dependence of uh, stature and reflects the cluster structure of uh, the seconds and its local dependence. Uh, and uh, I want to note that uh, the existence of uh, extremal index for stationary seconds is a very common property for stationary sequences. So Mm. It is a very uh, prominent uh, theme. Uh, okay, uh, there uh, a lot of uh, external index estimators proposed in the literature. We mention, for example, the joint block estimator by Hsin, Rans estimator by uh, Weissman and Novak, interval estimator, and uh, amongst others. But all of them require the choice of uh, one or two parameters, one or two additional parameters. Uh, to provide uh, the estimate of uh, external index. Uh, for example, disjoint uh, blocks and runs estimators require uh, the choice of two parameters and uh, such estimators as uh, intervals and uh, KGF estimators uh, requires, uh, requires the choice of only threshold parameter. Uh, and uh, in literature, there are a few works uh, uh, devoted to the problem of uh, selection, of optimal selection of the, uh, these parameters. And our aim is to propose the new method uh, of optimal selection of uh, these parameters, and so uh, of one of these parameters. And so if we have a um, external index estimator that requires the choice only of one parameter, then we propose the automatic uh, procedure to uh, extreme uh, index estimation uh, based on these parameters. So it's uh, okay. Uh, our approach uh, is based on the definition uh, of the uh, uh, is based on the notion of interaccidence times. Uh, let L be the number of interaccident uh, of exceedances of our process uh, over the level U and SJ be the indices of these exceedances. And we say that uh, TJ is the interaccidence times. Uh, if uh, TJ equals to distances between uh, two neighboring uh, exceedances of our process. And uh, for convenience, we say that, uh, we assume that uh, uh, the number of TJs is equal to L and uh, it's easy to see that uh, TJ is, uh, is a stationary sequence. <coughs> okay. Uh, Karen Zekers in uh, their uh, celebrated work uh, proves the following result that under some mixing conditions, uh, the distribution function of uh, somehow normalized uh, interaccident times, interaccidence time, 
Yes, uh, tends to a distribution function f theta that uh, uh, can be determined by the following relation. And uh, if we uh, will see on this uh, relation, we can deduce that uh, this distribution function is not continuous. And um, uh, so this uh, distribution function has an atom at zero of probability one minus uh, theta, yes. Theta is uh, the extremal index. And uh, this observation is very important for our fusion co uh, considerations. And um, there are two, uh, two famous estimators uh, of the extremal index uh, based on this property, uh, proved by Ferro Zegers. The first of them is uh, the interval estimator. Uh, one can derive uh, the explicit form of this estimator uh, applying the general methods of monons to the distribution function f theta. And the asymptotic properties, I mean uh, asymptotic normality, uh, of this estimator was investigated by Robert, uh, and he uh, showed the asymptotic normality of this estimator. And please keep in mind this uh, value b. Uh, it will appear in our results later. Okay, mm, the second tool that we use in our method is the discrepancy method uh, initially proposed by Markovich and Wapnik uh, for the problem of uh, for the optimal band by uh, selection uh, for the uh, kernel distance estimation. Uh, let rho be some seconds of, uh, some distance, uh, sorry, on the space of probability measures. Uh, G hat be the empirical distribution function of some sequence of random variables Xi, and uh, uh, GU be a family of uh, distribution functions uh, parameterized by one dimensional parameter U. So, uh, the method to optimal choice of uh, uh, this parameter u is the following. We should uh, find the solution of the discrepancy equation, the following discrepancy equation uh, with respect to u. And uh, where delta here, uh, it's uh, called uh, the discrepancy value, uh, is defined uh, corresponds to a choice of rho. Uh, sometimes there are uh, several uh, solutions of uh, this equation, and we address this equation later. Uh, okay, uh, let us also introduce the interoxidants, uh, normalized interoxidants times, uh, YI, YJ. Uh, we can see that uh, L divided by N is a, cons uh, is a uh, consistent es estimate for the tail, so we can suggest that uh, Interoxidants, uh, the normalized interoxidants times and uh, uh, the seconds of uh, these random variables have uh, the same, maybe not the same, but similar limit behavior. Okay, and uh, now we assume uh, assume that we choose the threshold parameter. Of course, our method is uh, mm, worse to selection of. Uh, uh, other parameters uh, need uh, need them for external index estimation, and uh, for the purpose of proposing our method, we would like to consider the statistic of Kramer-Farmer-Smirnov test of uh, goodness of fit as raw as metric, uh, where f theta is uh, that uh, distribution function that uh, was uh, was not continuous. Uh, the this slide, yes, this slide. Okay, uh, and uh, we have a little problem that uh, f that is not continuous, so the, uh, the limit distribution function of these uh, statistics uh, will depend on uh, will depend on theta, and uh, it's not a solution for us because we want to use uh, the quantiles of uh, this limit distribution for our aims for. Uh, the choice of delta for discrepancy value. So we have to truncate uh, our sample to avoid this problem. Uh, we will consider only the largest order statistics of the seconds YJ 
uh, and uh, build uh, the new uh, modified uh, omega squared statistics uh, based only on this uh, largest order statistics of the sample y. Uh, so uh, we see that uh, this statistic and uh, we will uh, select the parameter k such that all used or the statistics correspond to asymptotic non-zero normalized interoxidous time so we avoid this problem of uh, in, con in uh, continuity of the distribution function of theta and uh, of course this leads to uh, some interesting topic uh, of uh, uh, goodness of fit test and of distribution tails, but unfortunately we have not uh, time to discuss this problem. Maybe next time. Okay. Uh, so we now be able to uh, consider the asymptotic properties of uh, these proposed statistics under some conditions, under the conditions of theorem one in Ferro and Zegers. Uh, the proposed Kramer uh, from the Smirnov statistics. Uh, the limit distribution of the statistics is the same as the, uh, under some conditions uh, as the distribution function, as the limit distribution function of the classical uh, Kramer from the Smirnov statistics under goodness of fit uh, hypothesis. Uh, it's a sudden and uh, convenient result, so we can use the quantiles of well-known distribution A1 for our purposes, but uh, it's a little problem that these statistics uh, depend on, depends on theta. So we can use uh, the statistic on practice and uh, we have to uh, substitute theta by its estimate uh, to use uh, this result. On practice and uh, under some conditions imposed on uh, the this estimator that we plug in to the statistic uh, the limit behavior, uh, behavior of modified Kramer from Smirnov statistic uh, does not change and uh, the result is follows uh, let the conditions of uh, theorem uh, theorem one hold and assume that uh, external index estimator theta hat um, have some asymptotic property, for example, uh, asymptotic normality, and uh, under some addition, uh, additional conditions, the uh, limit distribution function of uh, modified Kramer from this of statistics does not change and equals to uh, the limit distribution function of classical one. Okay. The false, we can uh, use uh, the quantiles of A1 distribution as delta, and uh, here we select delta is equal to 0 0.05, the mode of this distribution A1, and our method is the following. Uh, the first, we find the solutions of the discrepancy equations, uh, discrepancy equation, the following discrepancy equation, and our final estimate is uh, the following empirical mean of uh, estimate of estimates uh, based on some uh, estimator of external index. We can plug, uh, plug in uh, every estimator. For example, uh, we use uh, in our simulation study uh, intervals estimator and uh, KGAPS estimator. And uh, you can ask me why I use here empirical mean, but not maximum, not minimum, not uh, median, uh, because uh, this uh, method provides uh, the best result on simulation study. So we use uh, this method uh, to choose the final estimate. Okay, uh, I have not uh, addressed uh, yet the question how to select the uh, number k of used uh, largest order statistics of uh, the sample y. Uh, it seems that uh, one, it seems that uh, maybe I just substitute the problem of uh, U estimation by the problem of K estimation, but in reality, uh, the choice of K does not affect uh, our, uh, the performance of our method uh, uh, a lot. Uh, so 
Nevertheless, it turns out that uh, the choice is k equals to uh, squared logarithm of L, and uh, other choice of k, this one, uh, that satisfy uh, the conditions of theorem one uh, is worse uh, than uh, the choice k equals to L uh, multiplied by some pilot estimate of uh, the external index. For example, interval estimate we can use for the same. Uh, thus, uh, it would be nice to investigate uh, the behavior of uh, the proposed uh, omega squared statistics under the uh, assumption that k divided by L tends to some non-zero constant, but not to zero. Unfortunately, in this case, uh, the limit distribution function of uh, uh, proposed omega squared statistics uh, it depends on the parameter theta. Uh, we deduced it uh, by a simulation study and uh, uh, we were able to investigate the limit behavior only of slightly different statistics omega squared uh, LC uh, defined it uh, as follows. It's uh, just a truncation of classical uh, Kramer from Smirnov statistics, as you see. Uh, okay, let us investigate the distribution properties of uh, these statistics. Of course, if uh, that is known, then uh, the limit behavior of the statistics uh, equals to the following. Uh, the distribution was the following random variable where B T is the st uh, standard brown bridge on the interval 0, 1. And uh, it's interesting, uh, does it hold uh, for the same, uh, the same statistics uh, with plugged into the uh, uh, some uh, extremal index estimator? For example, uh, the interval estimator. Uh, let us consider the following um, sample processes. Uh, simple process uh, where f, f hat is the truncated uh, empirical distribution function of the seconds y. And uh, we can see that uh, L2 norm of uh, this sample process is exactly equal to uh, our omega square statistics. And uh, we obtain the full result let uh, the seconds y satisfy the conditions of theorem uh, 3.2 uh, by Robert. Assume that uh, theta is positive and theta hat is uh, the interval estimator. And then uh, the estimator simple processes, uh, I mean uh, y hat of t, uh, we here substitute uh, theta by its uh, estimator, the interval estimator. Uh, and, uh, okay, this uh, sample process, uh, sample process converts weakly in the scar hole space to the Gaussian process X with uh, mean zero and the following uh, very cumbersome uh, covariance function. So we can see that uh, this process strongly depends on uh, the parameter set and it uh, L2 norm, of course, uh, uh, depends too. So uh, our answer is negative. Uh, our answer is uh, that uh, uh, modified Kramer from the statistics depends on the parameter 30 if k divided by L tends to some constant c. I want to end my talk by small simulation study. It's only one plot here, but in our paper with Natalie Michal, uh, there are at least, uh, I don't remember, 10 plots and uh, more than 10 tables. But okay, this uh, plot for me is uh, uh, the most representative one. Uh, here we can see the asymptotic, the, sorry, the empirical properties of uh, the four methods for automatic selection of the extremal index. Uh, 
sorry, automatic estimation of the extremal index, yes. Uh, four methods, uh, two methods is, uh, uh, two methods are uh, my and Natal Michalna, by my, uh, by me and Natal Michalna, and uh, in this is uh, uh, interval estimator coupled with the discrepancy method. Uh, K this is K gaps estimator with uh, uh, discrepancy method. Uh, K MT is uh, K gaps uh, coupled with uh, the method EMT proposed in uh, work of Fukutomi, Suvejis, and Davison. And int A1 is a method proposed in work of Ferreira. Uh, uh, based on interval systemator. Uh, so we can see that uh, in two metrics in RMSE and bias, our method, uh, I mean, uh, KDs uh, shows the best uh, accuracy uh, because uh, this line with uh, circles uh, is uh, the lower line here. Uh, I think it's all. Maybe Natal Michalna want to say some words about our paper. Uh, there is a small list of references. Uh, the first work is uh, our work uh, submitted to uh, Scandinavian Journal of Statistics, and uh, this works I mentioned in my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention. A list of references, if you want. In time, waiting for your questions. Thank you. Uh, any questions, comments before I will ask? Mm, what slide? If nobody, uh, yeah, stop, stop here, maybe. Yeah. Maybe the next, the, the next slide. Okay. Uh, this, this part doesn't belong to me. And this is the novel part, uh, what Igor uh, make uh, without me. And I think uh, since uh, we, we, we can see here truncation here, yes. right, uh, then uh, we uh, have additional parameter, C. Of course. C. And uh, of course, uh, this property is much better uh, I mean, from one side, uh, but for practice, then rather than uh, tending to zero. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it requires uh, also thinking how to how to select C. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose uh, this could be a problem, or one one can could ask. Uh, why we have uh, parameter k additionally to the threshold and also parameter c. L, L is the, I just remind the ordinals that uh, this is uh, the number of interexcedence times and that what we, we can get from, from the sample. Natalia Mikhailovna, c is, uh, has the same role as k. C, uh, bounds from uh, below the number of uh, used uh, interoxidant style for uh, our purposes. It could be, yeah, for yeah. asymptotic it doesn't matter how, yes. it doesn't matter, but for, for practical uh, applications then we, we could, we also have to ask, answer the questions. Yes, but I uh, said some words about uh, the car selection. But, uh, the best choice, uh, I think you remember that the best choice is k is equal to L uh, multiplied by some uh, estimate of uh, the external index. Yes, I see, but uh, yeah, th that was much better than anything else in our simulation study. Yes, yes. It's a problem, yes. It's an open problem, I don't know. It might be possible that one can take uh, instead of C just uh, a pilot estimator of extremal index. Maybe. I think yes, but uh, this result is inconvenient for practice because the limit uh, distribution of uh, the statistics depends on theta that we don't know. 
but but the practice of pilot estimators uh, are widespread in statistics. I can give you many examples of variable kernel estimator of density and things like that. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, quite natural to to take yes, uh, yes. some uh, some rough rough uh, estimator as a pilot and then uh, implement it uh, here. And one yes, it's a common method. I, I think yes, but but in, in this case, uh, C will become uh, a random a random variable. But yes, of course. But, uh, and it's a problem too because I think uh, then C will affect the limit distribution of yeah, exactly. our omega squared statistics. Exactly. exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Maybe somebody has comments. Uh, Our, our speakers are too fast. Okay, if you have no questions, then uh, let's thank uh, Igor for a nice talk. And I invite uh, Gennady Martinov. Uh, are you here, Gennady? I suppose yes, but he doesn't see me. Gennady, ah, yeah, I see you. I see, I see too. So you, you can load your. Have you my text? Yes, I said. Uh, all right. I can begin now. Two minutes. Oh.
Mm-hmm. You can begin. Yes, of course. Yes, it yeah. is fine. You see my text. Yes. Yes, everything is okay. Yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. The purpose of this report is to consider the goodness of fit tests for parametric families of distributions in cases where there is a dependence of the test statistic on unknown estimated parameters. Although this is question of the Kramer von Mises tests, much applied to Kolmogorov's Mirnov tests. Uh, <clears throat> we begin from the simplest case when hypothesis is simplest. In this case, case the st- Kramer von Mises statistic has, after transformation to interval 0, 1, is this transformation for this. Uh, <clears throat> form uh, and the uh, distribution of statistic not depends does not depends of distribution non distribution g from all from from all uh, <clears throat> from all distribution function g Геннадий Владимирович, извините, я вас перебью, а сделайте, пожалуйста, побольше масштаб, э, мелкие буквы. Мелкие, да? Да, побольше масштаб. Так, еще больше. Еще. А, спасибо. Вот. А у вас видна вся страница полностью, да? Нет, только часть страниц. Часть, да. And here, this test has the one distribution for all continuous functions G. And the limit distribution of the statistic has a, is the integral, squared integral from Brown Bridge. And the uh, limit distribution can be computed by this formula, the, where uh, PK is the uh, <clears throat> agent values of the for Brown Bridge. We, we will consider the statistic with <clears throat> the statistic with parameters. In this case, the <coughs> hypothesis zero is uh, that <coughs> observed <coughs> fun- function of the distribution function of observed random variab- variables belong to the parametric fem- fem- parametric family of distribution. And the situation is that for <clears throat> that it need to develop the theory for each parametric family. This is uh, valid also for the Kmaladze method. And <clears throat> The statistic has a simple form with this estimate, parameter estimator only. And the <clears throat> limit distribution, for, not limit distribution, by statistic on interval 0, 1 has form. This is empirical distribution function based on the some sample with, with transformation with this transformation with using the estimator. 
M2 Karl Kiefer Wolfowitz in, in 1955 was uh, held the formula for normal distribution, but this is more a modern formula. formula. This <coughs> we have that the empirical limit empirical limit process for empirical process here is the here is the empir empirical process with square of n, with multiplier square of n. This empirical process limiting is the Gauss process with covariation function, with, with zero men and covariation function of this form. And uh, this Q is derivative of distribution function on param parameter components. This is a vector. This is information feature matrix. And uh, this is this is this component for information matrix. Is this all transformated? This all transformated to interval zero one, and in the result we must have the condition of regularity. We will note only one main condition. This is integral on. Uh, Diagonal of the <coughs> covariant function must be less else infinity. And, uh, and <coughs> we, 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 we have, we can see that the covariant function, covariance function depends in general from unknown parameter t zero. And this is a problem, but uh, <clears throat> but как it was как uh, <clears throat> it was <clears throat> uh, was <clears throat> was developed by Katsky for Wolfowitz that this. Uh, <clears throat> For this family, G is, G is any uh, <coughs> continuous function. The <coughs> limit distribution, the limit distribution of the, and co covariance, covariance full function not depend from, not depends from the unknown parameter. Okay. We can have one dist limit distribution for statistic for all parameter. Oh, one limit distribution. After in uh, ten, this is my article in two hundred two thousand ten year was. Uh, developed theory for this, uh, for this uh, fa family of this type, type, and uh, also limit distribution not depend from two parameter. We can write here the covariant function, but they not depends from not depend from the parameter if the Covariance function not, does not depend from uh, parameters. This is valid for limit distribution of the statistic. And uh, we have follow table. 
fourth table. This, <coughs> this and left uh, the for the <coughs> table for first first for first family and uh, the right column is uh, for second family. Both of this family is connect, <coughs> connected connected by this transformation of the <coughs> by, by this transformation of the random variables observations. With this transformation we have this <coughs> family and with logarithmic transformation we have this family and <coughs> this connection this is connection between these two families with this transformation of the family and this is a transformation of parameters and in result we have the we have the normal distribution family log normal distribution family is a parents distribution family because uh, because for this uh, distribution family we have equal we can have equal statistics equal statistics equal distribution of the statistics for both family and uh, this also for negative exponential distribution and Pareto distribution connection extreme value distribution and variable distribution exponential distribution power, dis power distribution and logistic distribution and heritel distribution we have here most of the ob obviously used in practice uh, distribution and for all this distribution the <coughs> for all this distribution the <coughs> the distribution <coughs> of the limit distribution of statistic in, in inside of the family not depend of the parameter but we cannot see in this uh, list uh, the gamma <coughs> the gamma distribution and we will gamma distribution and uh, we will consider this this in later we will <coughs> uh, see that calculation of the statistic calculation of the statistic uh, can be very simple we transform observation in the, for parametric case we transform the observation by the <coughs> distribution function of this family with esti parameter estimated for in interval zero one and can simple method for calculation of statistic. Now we will uh, consider Result, results <coughs> with quasi transformation. This Maladze proposed the, this very interesting transformation of the <coughs> empirical process and of the empirical process to this form where 
this function v is <coughs> has this uh, form of this integral for form of this integral with <coughs> uh, this two sequence of integral in this uh, another integral and uh, <coughs> This uh, for have the statistic, for example, Kramer von Mises, we must this uh, this uh, function uh, uh, <coughs> take the another integral square for have the statistics, and this uh, <coughs> and this was uh, applied in the literature for one, or only one uh, simple example for exponential distribution. In this case, the, this function compensator is, <coughs> is this, this form. And it must, this form, but for exponential distribution, we have not any problem for testing hypothesis but we have different method different method of exponential of the <coughs> testing the exponential of the distribution and uh, <coughs> naturally that method method Malata is for some task has interest also but for simple work it is sufficient traditional traditional form and uh, in the and now we will see the Kramer for Mises test for gamma distribution family and Kalmagoros normal also and uh, this is the distribution fun gamma distribution function this is a derivative of the distribution on parameter k, k and kappa and uh, this is has multiplier and, uh, and <coughs> the information matrix and and the <coughs> Covariant function for empirical process limiting limiting empirical process this not, not empirical process we have in this form and uh, we have dependence from we have depend we have here the parameter present t, t, theta kappa and uh, this is transformation to the interval zero one, and this W function we have here. This is <coughs> this is <coughs> was <coughs> former was <coughs> was. Uh, was stated the stated that the uh, that the distribution of the <coughs> distribution of the Kramer von Mises test and Kolmogorov's mirror also not depends not depend of parameter theta and uh, here we can see see this uh, not not <coughs> strict st not strictly mathematical mathematically but <laughs> but by computation we have here values of <coughs> values of a covariant function with all this change of one, one parameter theta one, two, ten, and we have 
is that all value of this covariant, covariant function equal not, not change. But this is observation, but not mathematical result now. And uh, what make with this function in this, in this <coughs> direction, it is unknown for me now. And uh, here if we change kappa, here we have another value. And uh, if we change the t, t, we have also also from this an, another value. All, all work. And uh, and uh, was this <coughs> Independence from parameter theta was remarked by St Stephens in, in its artic article in the handbook of good sorted technique, Agostina e. Stephens. This is very famous. But this was short remark and uh, <coughs> and uh, in the writer that uh, theory is in a technical report of the university. Uh, university Mich Michigan maybe. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we this formal description of the for, for follow procedure procedure uh, <coughs> for testing for te for testing the uh, for testing the goodness of fit for the goodness of fit for uh, uh, family with many parameters parameters we <coughs> Can calculate we can calculate the statistic uh, distribution of statistic, statistic depends from unknown parameter. We will <coughs> modeling modeling of this <coughs> statistic with this uh, estimated parameter and uh, using critical values from this modeling. Uh, другой method. If we have if the parameter vector is small, then we can use the pre-calculated distribution table the statistic by method Monte Carlo or by exact method, it need to <coughs> select closest closest tab, table node to node to the parameter estimate. And here we <coughs> have some table, <coughs> some table. This we have the the theta kappa we can see that uh, change on theta is negligible for the Monte Carlo method. And uh, <coughs> we have the we have the table calculated for Kramer von Mises now by modelization temporary this in the table of uh, Stevens wall this table was beginning from one because here we have the difficulties for modeling in this in this area but this is present this value values 
and this is tables for <coughs> Kalmahoro Smirnov test. Here, here I was difficulties. I I had I had <coughs> have had difficulties here. Had, had have yes, and uh, because. <coughs> Because for the, this this observation of independence of theta, it is uh, sufficient for calculation of the distribution. But from mathematical point of view, it is not sufficient. And for the calculation, we can take theta, for example, one. One I calculate the tables and 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 here is a, another example shortly here we considered considered this uh, hyper normal distribution this module here this is a <coughs> for some parameter we have here we have here uh, <coughs> in in regularity in these distributions this is density in this distribution and uh, <coughs> I uh, applied the I applied the maximum likelihood estimations and uh, and <clears throat> and method moment for estimations we have here that for for some for some <clears throat> uh, for some uh, value of parameter this is independent from theta but uh, when the value of parameter near to this near to this uh, to this point to this region it is not work the theory not work we have also for <coughs> for measured moments and uh, it can be noted that this test can be can be uh, can, can be applied with with big with grand parameter theta, but uh, it is not valid from normal distribution also because here is normal distribution and uh, because we must. <coughs> estimate the parameter we cannot information that this is a normal distribution we must uh, uh, estimate this parameter in the general method method this is all thank you thank you very much questions comments any question Question can be on my post here, on my post electronic. Uh, then if you have no questions, then we, we have to thank uh, Gennady for the interesting talk. And we have a break of 20 minutes. What? Here, minutes past. What? <clears throat> I not heard this because it need more more more. Very good. What? Good. We will we will write your questions if any. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
We have coffee break now. Yes, thank you very much for your attention. At its uh, asymptotic power was analytically established for the case of Cauchy distribution that differ only by shift. Uh, by stochastic simulation, uh, we found that in this case, uh, its power is approximately equal to that of Wilcoxon, Mann, Whitney, and uh, Kolmogorov Smirnov test. But if the distribution differ also by uh, scale parameters, uh, simulation shows that the new test is considerably better. Um, um, so our uh, m uh, purpose was uh, achieved and uh, some acknowledgement. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Professor Yakov Nikitin for the help in calculating integrals. Work, my work, work of the by, uh, Russian Foundation of Basic Research. Uh, and we would like to thank organizers and participants who visited this presentation for their attention. And uh, if uh, you have any questions, I, would I will be glad to respond. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I have uh, a good distribution is very specific, and uh, I have my own uh, experience with that. It's absolutely, uh, it's, for me, it's the first time I see something like this. Uh, it's, uh, it's take, we, we, we take um, this distribution since it's uh, some crucial in the class, and this class is uh, interesting. Uh, as, as about Cauchy, uh, it also have some interesting applications. It's, I have no time to speak about this. But uh, our, uh, our um, main idea is that it's only, only uh, the, 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 the most difficult distribution. So if we calculate, uh, if we compare this two, we uh, could compare uh, every, every, every two from the class uh, better. So uh, since this distribution, Cauchy uh, distribution, uh, super heavy tailed uh, class. Yes, yes. And, and there are no yes. one moment exist. And yes. Uh, yes. this is very specific. And maybe you yes. could yes. reformulate yes. your results in this uh, for, uh, for generally for, for such class. Yes, but for example, if we take uh, normal distribution, yes, it uh, is for, from this class and our uh, test is only slightly worse than uh, the best test for for normal uh, for F, uh, for uh, T or F test. So so uh, um, it was. Uh, I I refer to the paper by um, by uh, uh, Zex and Uslan. Uh, Aslan they uh, they demonstrate that a test of such type uh, is very universal. And the calculation for Cauchy is only only extreme case. Uh, since for for other cases, uh, the situation will be only better. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I uh, I will provide uh, uh, theoretical uh, theoretical foundation, but uh, empirically, it's uh, show it was shown for many distributions that. Uh, it's uh, very good for other distributions uh, since uh, uh, it, it's uh, something like min, min max property or max mean. It's uh, maximize, uh, it's maximize uh, um, um, efficiency for, uh, for, the, for the worst case. Did you publish something? Uh, can you show? Uh, maybe? 
now only short only short um, only short paper is published in Kent's proceedings but uh, it was some numerical uh, numerical results in Vesnik uh, uh, of St. Petersburg University. Uh, it was not logarithmic, but similar tests. So uh, we, we, we go empirically, we, we construct uh, some uh, tests, and then I uh, guess that logarithmic will be better. For, for, for many tests, uh, which is uh, close to logarithmic, we published already uh, simulation results, not, not analytical. I see. But now, now in, in these proceedings in Springer, right, you, you will uh, yes. publish it? Yes, I will publish it. Yes. Theoretical too. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. If you have no questions, let, let's thank uh, Vyacheslav Borisovich for his nice talk. Okay. And, uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I invite uh, the last speaker, Ivan Tetovich. I am ready. Yeah, you you can start. I am Ivan Saitovich from Institute for Information and Transmission Problems and offer you a report on robot sequential to the to the parameter estimating. The report is organized as follows. Introduction, where we study the pro uh, in this report, we study the problem of parameters estimating if there are a slight deviation between the parametric model and the real distributions. We propose estimator is uh, the proposed estimator is based on suboptimal testing of building by a special way non-parametric hypothesis. Post a natural for this problem risk function and we found that the risk function has an exponential decrease to the mean number of observations. Numerical results are comp comparative analysis of a risk function behavior for the proposed estimator and some another estimators are presented. Robust estimation of statistical models parameters is one of the important problems in the statistic. The main problem consists in a rapidly decre decreasing power of a robust estimator under deviation from a pure parametric model. Our approach is the stronger. We construct suboptimal estimators. It is so that its power conver converges to the power of a symptoptically optimal sequential test when the neighborhood size of the hypothesis converges to zero. Additionally, we investigate a problem to construct a guaranteeing decision. One of, of popular methods for robust estimator constructing based on influence functions proposed by Huber. However, it is known that a power of statistical decision depends of a distribution tail. In these papers, there are investigated the problem of robot discriminating of hypothesis and an influence of a tail decreasing on a test power are indicated. Based on modification of the, of the sequential probability ratio test, 
There are obtained the suboptimal sub sequential test. We apply this method for a robust estimation of parameters. In the paper 4, Saitovich further method is applied for a robust estimation. There are proposed the setting of the problem of sequential robust estimating of unknown parameter with the guaranteeing decision and the risk functions of an estimate. It is found that in general the mean square risk is an informative function to separate estimators and that the proposed risk functions rate decreasing is an exponential under the mean number of observations. In addition, it is constructed the estimator with near to optimal properties for some statistical model, and its properties are investigated for one-dimensional one parameter sets. Now we illustrate the general setting for 2D parameter to two-dimensional parameter estimating. We use the following standard designations and suppose that the following regularity conditions is valid. This condition is condition for the metric D that are on the set of possible distribution P. We see the standard uh, logarithm of likelihood ratio, Kubek-Leiber divergence, and so on. We suppose that the set of possible distribution has the following structure. We have a parametric set P0 of density with respect to a sum Rebecca measure mu where unknown parameter is two-dimensional. The set P is a sum neighborhood of the set P0 and the, the metric D. Here we use the following designation and assumptions. It is followed from four that the important point of building of a suboptimal estimator is to choose a cover of the parameter set theta. It is known that the plane can be covered by the right hexagons. That is why they are chosen as a cover for the task set here. The parameter delta, delta is the accuracy of description continuous uh, of describing distributions from P by using the parametric family P0. Here are the following designation and definitions of neighborhoods of parameters. The neighborhoods with common points with uh, our hexagon form is first level of neighborhood. The neighborhood with common point with the external border of the first level neighborhood form is second level neighborhood and so on. The L else level neighborhoods is denoted by following.
let pi for pi let us define the else level alternative set of parameters for theta e0. This definition of the alternative set means that all theta from the else level neighborhood of parameter for pe does not distinguish with p theta e. In this assumption, we, we see that uh, uh, all distributions from this hexagon are, uh, are indistinguished. We define uh, Delta, delta neighborhoods of parametric family P0 as uh, bringing all the delta neighborhoods of distribution from the parametric family together. Therefore, we suppose that uh, possible set of distributions is P delta for certain delta and fix this delta. Parameter delta is a parameter of the constant later estimate. We have uh, accuracy of the parameter theta estimating and the information distance to the nearest alternative neighborhood. This took, uh, we have two contradict requirement. L needs to be as large as possible for maximizing information distance and it is, it needs be as small as possible for maximizing accuracy of parameter estimated. Later we use the following designations. This and value of possible hypothesis that appears when we will be construct our estimate. And the following designations. Such as we have a set of undistinguished unknown parameters, therefore all of uh, a loss function of parameter estimation can be the following. We have a zone where all parameters delta give us a zone where all parameters suppose is true. We do not have lost when we take a result of estimating theta hat instead of center of corresponding hexagon. The risk function we define as follows. Supremum in the risk function means that we find guaranteeing decisions only. As in paper 4, we suppose that the following regularity conditions are valid. They are not difficult from the practical point of view.
we perform the following estimator tilde theta. For every pair of distributions, we calculate the logarithm of likelihood ratio. We stop observation at the first moment such that at least one at least one infinum by the alternative set of distribution. For logarithm of likelihood ratio exceeds the level minus logarithm beta and accept as ec estimator the center of hexagon with number R that is the value of arc maximum by I. For this uh, estimator, we have the following result. Upper bound for the mean duration of observation and for the probability on of wrong decision. M0 uh, is the number of hypotheses and uh, is the number of hexagons and therefore M0 does not exceed N delta. We use the following definitions. Definition one give us the concept of the admissible estimator. It satisfies the following condition. And the definition two give us a concept, a concept of suboptimal estimator. It has two limits. This limit is that probability of uh, the probability of uh, mistake tend to zero, and this limit is that the uh, size of neighborhoods tends also to zero. And the main result consists in suboptimality of our estimator Ted Titan. For numerical illustration of general theory, we propose two models of data generating. We estimate the mean of normal distribution of normal distribution. The set theta has the following structure. It consists of regular hexagon with the following centers. The model consists in the following. The distribution mixed with another distribution that is named as a noise distribution. We have two cases of noise distribution. The first case 
correspond a noise with the extreme heavy tail, the noise concentrated at the one point with probability one. But we don't know this point. The second case corresponds to a noise with a light tail. The tail density is exponential decreasing. In uh, second, for second model, we have continued density functions, and therefore the, our test. Uh, is constructed with um, is more easily than in the first case. We are comparing our estimator with classical estimator of means, variation of Huber's estimator, and Andrews estimator. Where the following functions used. The proposed Andrews method has the significant advantage over other estimators because it used information about the true value of parameter when data translated by this formula. We have as a measure of effectiveness of our of effectiveness our risk functions, the asymptotic effectiveness, and the mean square risk. The model parameters are the following. M gives us the number of hexagons. This is the number of uh, true center of hexagons. And these are other parameters of our model. Here presented the numerical result for the model with heavy trail distribution. In terms of the functions of quality R, all estimators are robust, and in terms of criteria of mean square roots, Uh, also, all are robust except the classical statistic statistical mean. We see this number. All estimators except theta have similar values of Fix functions. And uh, similar asymptotic effectiveness, except it I, because it is very effective because of about circumstance of his advantage. Our estimator is less effective than another because theta h and bar theta are focus, focused on such data in context with oriented and to more general situation till the test.
here, here it is presented the result of the calculation for the model with light tail distribution. In this case, all estimators are robust under all risk functions. We see that uh, mean square risk is less informative than uh, function R to, do, to, to determine effective estimates. Excluding theta A for all other estimators, the sigma value different in consequence inconsequently as opposed to function R when values are very same times. Unlike the previous model, our estimators is more effective it is follows from this table. The data shows that the tilde theta score has a significantly higher performance rate than the rest of other estimators. The data shows that the average deviation from an informative indicator for the classical estimators in contrast with the risk functions are. And we finish by conclusions. We propose a setting of the problem for sequential robust estimating of unknown two-dimensional parameters with a guaranteeing decision and the risk function of an estimation. We des describe a possible way for constructing the modified system of neighborhoods from four, four two-dimensional parameters. We propose a suboptimal estimator for 2D parameters estimated. It is found that in general the rate of risk function decreasing is an exponential under the mean number of observation. The mean square risk is an informative function to separate the estimators. The proposed estimator tilde theta have stable result of, a, of the accuracy for heavy and light ta tails of the noise and in some cases is turned out to be better than the well-known robust estimators. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Questions? Comments? Sorry. And uh, we will uh, finish our session. Thank you very much for your interesting talk. And that's all for today. So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, the first uh, conference day is finished. And uh, on, uh, the, uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank all the speakers and the participants and uh, it would be a great pleasure to see you tomorrow. We will start at 10 o'clock as usual. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much.